Right, without further ado, I'd like to invite into the ring from the red corner from Sheffield Allen, the Hallam team. Hello and welcome to Sheffield Varsity Boxing Event 2024. My name is Holly Keane and I'll be your presenter for this evening. And I'm joined by my two pundits, we have Em Evans and Hugh Richards. Uh, we're set for a really exciting evening this evening. We've got 12 fights going on. Um, so Emily, how are you feeling about tonight? I'm really excited about tonight. We've got some great boxers out there. Everyone's trained really, really hard and I think it's going to be a really good night of boxing. Thank you. 12 bouts tonight, two women. 10 the men, we are going to have a great time tonight. You can hear announcing in the background. We have got a sold out crowd tonight. It is going to be packed. You can't even hear it. <laughs> the, the boos and the cheers. It is fantastic. The atmosphere tonight is absolutely incredible already, and we're only just getting started. They've um, just announced the Sheffield University team coming on now. I'm sure you can hear the audience in the background. <laughs> Christian Suter for Uni of Sheffield is one to look out for. A lot of first bouts tonight, but he has been training hard and all of them will be ones to watch out. You never know, especially with the first bouts. They're all a bit of an enigma and it'll be a fantastic night of boxing. Yeah, we've got loads of new bouts. People with new, haven't bout, had about four. Um, some people have had a few. I'm really excited for the female fights. Um, they're both, um, this is both their first fights, so it should be really good. Um, uh, just introducing the uh, boxes now, so it's getting, it's get, everyone's getting ready. <laughs> so what sort of things should we be looking for tonight? What makes a good fight in boxing? Um, ring dominance is a big one. Keeping boxer that's dominating the ring and taking the middle or having their opponent on the ropes. Um, footwork, in and out, defence work. And just landing a lot of like nice clean shots, really. Yeah. Um, confidence will be a big thing tonight. They'll all be feeling nerves, especially in front of such a big crowd. You know, family, friends, everyone watching. It'll be really difficult to come over that mental battle, but the people who do will certainly come out top, regardless of the training, regardless of the technique. They have got to dominate the ring, and they've got to get the one up on their opponent. But I'm sure they've all trained hard, all well prepared. So we'll see. So how are they going to be scoring the good points today? What makes what's a high score in here? Um, so yeah, like we we're saying, like dominating the ring, getting clean shots, um, defending a lot of shots, using your head movement, and keeping your hands up, and yeah, just keeping on your feet, um, light feet, and yeah. Yeah, as you said, just making sure you control the ring, you know, keeping on your feet, keeping that footwork nice and tight, keeping right as well, making sure you're not too planted. And, but they know that, they all know that, they've been training for a long time. It'll just be how they do on the night and how they cope with it. So what, both of you have boxed before, you last year, so what is the training process like for Barsi? It's quite intense, it's a lot of... It's not just training and boxing classes, it's also a lot of fitness, eating well. I mean, some of these boxers probably had to cut weight to match their opponent's weight. So it's all round, like, how, um, fitness, like actual technique and eating well, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the nutrition is a massive side. And as well as the, in the, you can put all the hard work in the gym and as you said, people be cutting, putting on weight for these fights because they've got to make weight. Yeah, it's going to be a really difficult part of the training process, but... Nutrition is probably the biggest part, and that conditioning as well. Constantly on the bag, constantly practicing your technique, sparring a lot. I'm sure these guys have been sparring a lot down Sheffield City Boxing, Alan Boxing. Um, that'll be a lot different to the real fight, but that'll give them as good an experience as they can get. So, as the women's captain for Sheffield Uni Boxing, you've seen a lot of these guys fight before. Is there anyone in particular that you're thinking is going to be the fight to watch? Um, I think Jack Whiteman, who's our last fight of the night, he's a really good boxer. He's actually his first bout, but we've done a lot of preparation. We have sparring days, so it's like a fake bout and you it practices like for the real thing. 
Um, Pat Mullen, he was meant to box last year at Varsity, but he actually broke his arm. So he's come back. I think he really wants it this year. And I'm also really looking forward to the female fights. Like, it's really great to see two more fights this year. Um, because it's really hard with weighing, matching weights and stuff like that. But there's a lot of exciting fights tonight. It should be good. Yeah, everyone sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> So, Hugh, what do you tend to do when you're preparing for a fight? Oh, um, there's not much. You know, there's not much you can do once you're there. Once, you, once you're in this arena, there'll be all kinds of emotions. And you've just got to try and keep on top of it the best you can. The heart will be pumping. The blood will be pumping. Some people will be. I mean, it's normal. You'll have. You'll be a bundle of nerves, but just containing that, keeping that straight. You know, in your head, you've done the pre preparation. And to fail to prepare, prepare to fail. They'll know exactly what they've done for this fight, and they'll know whether they want it enough and want to win tonight. So, for people who haven't watched boxing before, can you explain a little bit how it's going to work tonight? So, how many fights, how many rounds, things like that. Uh, yeah, so there'll be 12 fights, so each fight will be three rounds of two minutes, and then um, between the rounds there's a minute of rest, and then there's three judges who will all score, um, and so they put their three cards and whoever, someone will either have all the wins from all three judges or they might have two from one and one from another and that'll be a split decision. Um, so yeah, it's, it's 12 fights tonight, so it's a lot of good fighting out should be tonight. Yeah, yeah. I think the scorecard will play a big part. I hope there's not too many stoppages. You always want to see it go the full three and see what these fighters can do. And, there might be quite a few standing counts tonight, especially with these first-time bouts, but you do want to see it go all the way, and we, we hope to see less stoppages this, this time round. There was quite a few last year. So hopefully, yeah, we'll see these fighters put on as good a show as possibly can, and they'll just bring their A-game. Yeah. Are we expecting any knockouts this evening? You never know. You never <laughs> yeah. know with boxing. I think it's quite evenly matched. That's like because our coach, he coaches both clubs and like all the boxers kind of train together. So he's quite good at matching everyone. But the ha last year there was one and the year before someone got the towel thrown in. So you never know. You really never know. Yeah. So what does that mean having a towel thrown in? So if the towel's thrown in, it means that the coach will throw it in and it means they're stopping the fight. So for two years ago, um, the boxer was just exhausted and so their coach threw it in because he knew they were struggling yeah. uh, and it stops the fight and the other person will normally get the win. Yeah, yeah. So I, th I think as you said they'll, they'll be matched up very well like the coach knows them both inside and out and each, each fight will have been matched perfectly on weight and skill level and they've done sparring as I said before. So the heavier ones, we might see some knockouts. You never know, they can land some big blows and it only takes one shot. But as I said, I hope to see these rounds go all the, all the way through to the, to the third round because that would be fantastic. So if a lot of these people have trained together and they box together already, they're kind of going up against their friends, aren't they? Yeah, so actually a lot of them on the sparring days will have sparred each other before. I know Sophie and Holly, one of the girls' fights, They've um, boxed each other twice now before in proper sparring days, so they'll know each other quite well, which will be an advantage, but a disadvantage because their opponent will know them really well, know how they move. Mm. Um, but yeah, so a lot of the boys have also will have sparred each other, yeah. um, especially in the mixed training sessions. Um, so really, a lot of them, it all comes down to how they perform in the ring tonight. Yeah. I think once you get in there, it's such a big crowd, it's really nerving. And I just think sometimes people can just it, it just gets to them too much. Um, they're really about to got to keep their composure, like block everything out and just try their best, really. Yeah. Do you think it's easier to fight somebody that you know or easier to go in with a complete stranger? I think it would definitely be harder for these guys. It's, it's sort of almost classic to say, like, you want to hate the one that you're fighting. You see all these big bouts where, like, your Tyson Fury Wilder, where they're going at each other, hammer and tongs, and trying to, trying to just go personal at each other, get give jibs and jibes at each other, but these guys, have all, they're almost mates in a way, that they've shared the ring, they've got, it's, there's a lot of respect I think is the biggest thing, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I think there's a lot of respect when you when you sparred against that person and you have to, unfortunately have to fight them in the, in the big one, then there's still a lot of respect there, but it can sometimes be not as motivating in a way, yeah. in a weird way. Harder to get aggressive with your friends. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? exactly. You don't want to kill them. Yeah. You know? And is the key aggression in boxing, or do you think it's better to be a bit more tactical? 
in, so, in these bouts, in the three rounds, I think the fitness and the aggression might prove to be, if, if, the, if you can see that someone's controlling the center of that ring, and the judges will, will make clear note of that, that will be, be quite important because the, an aggression, if you can sustain that for three rounds, that will be quite impressive, first of all, but also will be quite telling on the scorecards, I think. Yeah. I think you can also, like, some people see red, you know, you get hit once and you just think, oh, I'm just going to go all in, throw as many punches. But actually, you need to think about your defence. Like, you may be throwing, but they may be throwing more. Like, it's about keeping a cool head, but keep coming forward keep dominating that ring and keep landing as many punches as possible really. Yeah. So do you think technique over strength or strength over technique? I really don't think it's on strength like it's difficult because obviously you can get one really good shot that's really strong and that can just throw them off but I also think it's more likely that if you're matched um, on your way it's like it's more likely if you just keep going at them consistently you are going to get the win and you yeah as long as you don't put all your power into the showing these big shots because you will tie yourself out. Just keeping on that jab, um, that is a really good technique. Yeah. yeah, and the speed as well will be really important, especially with these lighter guys. They've got to be quick on their feet and they've got to make sure that they, they can duck where you get outside the punches because they'll be coming fast at each other, especially with the three rounds. They'll be, they'll be making sure they come up fast at each other and that could be quite telling. If someone's, if someone's a bit slow off the mark, if someone's not concentrating, the focus is really important as well. You've got to maintain that the whole way through the fight. Yeah, yeah. So, Uniov won last year. Any predictions for this year? I honestly don't know. It's a really tight one. I mean, Uniov won last year for the first time in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So they won it bad this year. Everyone's trained really hard. But it's so difficult because everyone's matched so well. You really, I think it all comes up to, I mean, obviously it all comes up to tonight. Yeah. Um, it's difficult to tell. Yeah. yeah as I've said, it's historically been a bit of a Hallam show really here at the boxing and they've turned it around last year and can they can they keep that form up and we'll see the crowd the crowd will be fighting for both sides so we'll, we'll find out yeah yeah well everyone seems pretty excited to watch the fights this evening everyone's been anticipating this event for quite a while it is one of the highlights of varsity it's such a big night I think like it's similar to the ice hockey so many people come down I know like obviously everyone's friends and family will have come down to see it so it's just yeah and people have trained so hard for this like it's really been up and coming in the last few months it's not just technique it's fitness honestly like six minutes doesn't sound very long but once you're in there and you're putting everything you have into it like it's exhausting so yeah yeah, yeah it is absolutely knackering especially as as we've mentioned quite a few times it is their first bouts for quite a few of these fighters so they will be knackered by the end of it, I'm sure, because yeah. they will put everything into this. They've got people watching at home, you guys. We, we've got so many people in the stands as well. Yeah. Friends and family, as we mentioned. Yeah. It is a bit of pressure on them, you have to say. <laughs> but Well, let's see if they can handle the pressure. We are about to start. Um, I think the first fight is just about to begin. Um, so, yeah, we'll pass you on to the ring in a couple of minutes.
the east. You want to start talking? Maroon, black, gold, blood, sweat, tears, and honour like no other. The 12 fighters battling for university glory. Fight nights don't get any better than this. No matter where you're watching, you are in for a real treat. This is Bar City Boxing 2024. I'm Charlie Fenton, and joining me in commentary tonight is the wonderful Dan Platz. How are you doing this fine evening? Yes, I'm very well, thank you, Charlie. We've got a great night ahead of us, and to all you viewers, it's a pleasure for us to be your co-commentators for the first seven bouts. We're here in the octagon, ready for action. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. So, Dan, we've just seen Hallam boxer walk into the ring. Can you talk me through? Yes, so this is Sam East. He is a student from Nottingham, currently studying sports coaching and, and development. In the blue corner, Ollie Flea. And this is his first amateur bout, where he's played football for 12 years. So you can say the phrase, coaches don't play, doesn't yeah. apply here. <laughs> Let's hope he's in as a Zidane, doesn't come out, and you yeah. know, he goes headbutting. Let's really hope for that. But you know, this year, University of Hallam are actually looking to take the title. Uni have won it last year, beating Hallam 7-2. to two. Do you think they have what it takes, Dan? Well, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. Walking to the ring right now is Ollie Fleet, the University of Sheffield student. He's had no previous bouts and he's been training for a year. He's a final student from Cambridge. This is going to be a very interesting one and it I don't is. think a lot of fans will have any idea how it's going to go. Well, I'm looking forward to it. They look ready in the ring. They do. I wonder how they're feeling. The first time in the ring for both of these fighters. How would you be feeling in this situation, Dan? Oh, well, I've never been in a boxing ring myself. <laughs> 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 I'll certainly be feeling the nerves at this point. I think adrenaline will kick in yeah. as soon as he steps into the ring, though, for the University of Sheffield fighter. The crowd looks like it's filled. There was a few rooms at the start if it was going to fill, but it looks like it's filled nicely. A few seats left, but they must just be at the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looks like we're getting started soon. Um, So Dan, can you talk me through the structure of the, of the actual fights tonight? So all the fights coming up will all be three two-minute rounds and there are, I believe, three scorers at the end if it finishes all three rounds. Our first bout of the evening is a contest consisting of three two-minute rounds. Introducing in the red corner from Sheffield Allen, Sammy's. So a lot of boos there, but also a few cheers from the crowd for the Hallam student. And his opponent to Not the greatest reception. The University of Cheryl, Ollie Fleet. Well, we can tell what the majority of crowd East are thinking for today, what they're wanting the to happen today. Referee, Mr. Harry Conlon. Here we go, first bout. Apologies for the troubles there for all you viewers if you couldn't hear the ring announcer for a second. But here we are about to get underway in our first fight of the evening. Welcome along to Forge TV's live stream. There goes the bell. So it's a quick start from both here. Both wanting to control the middle of the ring. Some good blocking there. And it gets very tight very quickly between the two fighters. A good job there from the Uniab fighter. Coming into this with a lot of energy, haven't they? Both Do you reckon of them that's have, the, yeah. the adrenaline you're talking about? Well, obviously, neither of them have had experience in the boxing ring before, so maybe they just go out there, try and put on a show for the fans, and bring it home for their respective universities. Yeah, it's a little bit tentative now, sort of broken the nerves. Obviously, it's only three two minute rounds, so I think we'll see a lot of energy throughout. Yeah, we've all. got a lot to get in, you know? Yes. He's got him in the corner here. There's yeah, some good punches thrown there by Sam East. Do you think he should move out the you way can tell down? he's controlling the ring so far. Here we go. Ooh, Ooh lid 
Bounce him slightly there. there from Sam East. Oh, and the student in and the student in gold and black. Oh, and it's been called. Back to the corner for the referee gives the count. Back to the corner for Ollie from Chef. So Sam East is still fit to continue here. Straight back into it is the Uni of Sheffield fighter. He keeps him in the corner again. He's got the upper hand here. Sam East does well to bring it close together. He has done very well, you know. Good he connections here from Ollie Fleet. We're about a minute in, Dan. Takeaways. Well, so far. Oh, looks like he's been pulled back to the Ollie corner. Ollie Fleet is showing very promising signs so far. I think he seems a little bit more composed. I think Sam East just needs to clear his head. Get a little bit of breath back. There goes the round. There goes the round. Who just who says he's taken it? I think Ollie Fleet threw, I think initially he threw less punches, but altogether he threw the much more concise punches. So I'm giving that a 10 9 round to Ollie Fleet. Would you, do you reckon that would be reflected by the referees today? Ref scorers today, sorry. I think it will be. I think it will be. Great performance from both fighters there. What a great way to start. Bar City Boxing 2024. The crowd are loving it. I don't know if you came from home, the Uni of um, Chants, as well as the Hallam Chants. Some yes, it's very interesting to see if these two fighters can keep it up for all three rounds. They obviously have another two minute of uh, round two coming up. Both fighters are sat down in the corners. They do look a little bit out of breath already, Charlie. Mm. What do you think? Um, yeah, you know, you can see in the corner, you can see in both corners, Trainers giving wide wo wise words, telling them what exactly what they need to do. It's just about them now following through with those instructions. They both look ready. Of course, I think it's it's going to be another case of who tries to control the ring first. I think Ollie Fleet does seem the more composed at the moment, but you never know what's going to happen in these fights. Whoa! Well, it's more of the same, but that was not a knockdown from Sam East. It was a slip up from Ollie Fleet. Here we go. The back we get in the back middle. underway from the referee. Do you reckon that might have knocked his confidence slightly? Uh, I don't think so. Obviously, there wasn't a connection there. Both fighters knew that it was just a fall. Great and Ollie Fleet there. already looks back into it. Them little jabs that he's getting just seem to be more effective at the moment. And you can hear a lot of the crowd are already engaged with this bout and we're only in the number f in the first bout as well let's hope this energy stays throughout the whole throughout the whole, whole evening yes throughout the whole evening certainly throughout the seven fights that we are yes. commentating on hr yes oh some good that was a good hook thrown there here we go so far rest performance how do you think he's handled this <laughs> issue well he's allowing it to play out He's obviously, if it comes close together, if they come within tight, he is allowing them to move apart. And yeah, it's a nice flowing fight, fight so far. Coming into the latter end of the second round. Oh, not a bad connection there from Sam East. I think this round has been more even, but oh, some good go. punches there from Ollie Fleet. Some great punches there. Some good returns as well by Sam East. Great, that great was a great round. second round. I, I do have to say, I think that was more even. Who I takes think, it for you, Dan? I think that was a lot. I think that was a very even round. I think I'm going to give that a 10-10 round. So I believe heading into the final round, from us two, the commentators in the box, it will be. Uh, a one-point lead for the University of Sheffield student. Now, what do you think the refs are saying? It's ref, sorry. Coaches are saying to Sam and Ollie. Well, I think the University of Sheffield coach will be more pleased so far with what he's seeing. I think uh, Ollie Fleet is a little bit more composed, mm. but Sam East has hit a lot of good punches in that. He's thrown a, he's throwing a lot more, but he 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 didn't manage to hit as many composed punches in the first round. But in that second round, he had a lot more connections, and I think you could feel. I think you could see the feeling on Ollie Fleet's face as well. This is coming up for a close, close final round here. It's all on the line for both of these fighters. 
takes home the first point for either university and I think it'll I think the crowd will definitely make it known for which university they believe will win that. It's a very quick start from Ollie Fleet once again and the referee separates. Sammy so far in this in the early parts of round three has managed to dodge the jabs more, but if he comes in close, I think Ollie Fleet does have the upper hand here. He's throwing a lot more powerful punches. Both not looking too heavy. Both both got the energy Ooh, sucking those good punches. Good connection there from Sam East. He's returned one though. Ollie Fleet does well to stay behind the jab at times. And when he gets close, both fighters look intimidating. We're getting to the latter ends of the round now. It's going to be interesting to see what the scorecards look like for the judges. Ollie Fleet with a nice couple punches there. It just feels like if Sammy uh, lands one of those powerful punches, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't. You don't. So far, it just hasn't happened for the Hallam University fighter. He's managed to stay up really well there. He has. How, which side do you think the crowd's going? I think there's a slight majority rooting for Ollie Fleet mm. in, the Sheffield, in the Uni of Sheffield fan oh. base here. We are in the Octagon, obviously on the Uni of Sheffield part of town. But across the town, I think they'll be rooting just as loudly for their fighter. But a great East. reception regardless. It's a brilliant for both, reception. Especially yeah. for those punches. It's another good couple of punches there for Ollie Fleet. We're at the end of the fight here. A great end. And that a was great a great end. first fight we have just witnessed. For well, you, Dan, who's taken that? For me, I think it was a very close fight. All three rounds were close. But I do believe that the University of Sheffield student will be more pleased of the two. But you never know what the judges will score it. You never know, win boxing. Okay. So, announcers back into the ring. Who is going to take Varsity Boxing 2024's first victory on the night? As we said, Uni of Sheffield took, took the title last year, 7-2. I don't think who takes this will um, Joe Winner, ladies and gentlemen, battle number one with a unanimous points decision in the blue corner. And that is the first point on the board for the University of Sheffield student. I was we did believe it was going to happen up here in the commentary box. Both fighters fought really well and both fighters should rightly so get a great reception from the crowd. There are a lot of wild fans there for the University of Sheffield student, Ollie Fleet who in his first amateur bout, he wins in the th after three full rounds on unanimous decision. Great Congratulations to Ollie Fleet. Great also, performance. great performance there from Sam East, the student from Hallam, also his first uh, bout. And he's not been in to boxing for that long. Obviously played football for 12 years. It was a great performance from both fighters and we hope it can keep up throughout the other fights upcoming. Like I said, I don't think this win will dictate the, the journey of the night, but it is great to see the crowd so lively for both fighters. Um, up next, Dan, who do we have? So in the next fight, we have the University of Sheffield student Christian Shooter versus Tala Ralph from Hallam, who is a cybersecurity student. He's found an enjoyment for boxing and fitness, but it is again his first bout in the ring now on the other hand Christian Shooter he's, has been part of the club for two years and he's not the first of his family to be in varsity for, for the University of Sheffield is that true? yes well his brother you not fought in varsity 2022 and was a uni of and was a uni of Sheffield club captain in 2023 and if Christian is a well known face in the club since he's joined two years Now, ago. Dan, do you think Christian has a slight bit of pressure on him tonight? Or do you think his brother, who's, who is in the building today, will be giving him that support? 
Well, obviously, being club captain, uh, your brother being club captain, it's going to be very interesting for how he feels about walking up to the ring. It is his first varsity. And you never know with these fighters that haven't had uh, about yet in amateur boxing. You never know what Tyler Ralph. But the ring announcer just announced his name to walk to the ring here. He's now on his way. You never know what he's going to bring. You don't, you don't know what his fighting style's like. It's going to be hard to judge what he's going to be like. He's walking around to the red corner now. Obviously of tall stature. Looking very confident, isn't he? He's got the haircut of a proper boxer, he hasn't he? I must say, he does. Um, he's got the and now on. we're going to welcome, once Tyler has come to the ring, we're going to welcome the Uni of Sheffield fighter, Christian Shooter. Let's see what his demeanor is going to be like walking up to the ring. It's going to be very interested how the crowd cheers for this competitor. And in the blue corner, Christian Shooter! Mixed reaction there from the crowd, eh? I think the Hallam, the Hallam voices have come out in force. They yeah. have. He walks on his own, Christian Shooter, a little bit shorter than Tyler Ralph. He's got the swagger, though. He does. It was a quick, it was a quick walk. It was very brisk. To the corner. He, you know, he, he might, knows he what he's going to do. Both seem to be in the zone. Yeah. Yeah, both of these fighters will be confident. They might not know much about each other. We had the relaxed walk from Tala. Christian was straight in. Well, let's hope they both bring that energy. Brought to us by Oli and Sam. As, as Christian steps into the ring, we are here now for the second bout of Varsity he will be 2024. Looking. Yes, sorry about that, Charlie. He will be looking to well, follow in his two, brother's gentlemen. footsteps, it's fighting in varsity. It's going to be three, a great achievement, rounds. and I'm sure both their parents will be in proud. In the red corner, representing the Sheffield of Alam, Talifaharu! A great reception. And his opponent in the blue corner, representing the University of Sheffield, Christian Cedar! In the red, Slightly in the louder reception Charlie there for Fee, Christian. He may be the favourite going into this fight. But here he's, we go. He's been in the club of the University of Sheffield Boxing Club for longer than Tyler's been fighting. But you never know what's going to happen. Let's hope for another energetic bout as we had in the first. And, and there goes the bell to mark the first round. Straight in there, Christian was. He was quick to get across the ring. A great little jab there. From you can Tala. tell that the reach has got. You can tell that Tala's got the reach so far. He does look taller. Both showing that confidence though at the start. Not getting too drawn in. I mm. think in the first fight, both fighters wanted to get involved very quickly, very early doors. But in this fight, they seem a little bit more composed. Both fighters. They know what they're in for. Tala I think so far, Taller is getting the, getting the jabs in nice and early. He's got the reach on him. He can stay at distance in this fight. How do you think Christian might go on the attack against Taller here? I think, Tala, I think Christian's going to have to try and get in deep there. He's going to try and have to get close to Taller. Maybe a few body shots would help as well. But in these amateur bouts... You don't know what goes down. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. Like said, both quite tentative, but still showing off the quality they have to show. Um, about halfway through the first round here, who's taking it for you? I think it's been fairly even. Talos throw more jabs. He's got the length on. He certainly has the length on Christian. It is certainly playing a big advantage to him so far. Christian is trying to get in deep. Good few dodges there from Christian, but he does get caught with a couple there. He's getting caught here. Tala controlling the ring throughout this round. And well, Christian Shooter needs to find a way back in. Maybe that was it. It was a good, it was a good land there on Tala. Got himself out the ropes there very well. Ten seconds to go. And now the roles are reversed here. 
And that is the end of round one. A good first opening round. Not as many in clo uh, close encounters there, but I don't think Tala needs to get close to come out of the winner of this fight. He's got the reach. He certainly has the reach on Christian. You can tell that from the height and the arm distance. He can sit behind the jab. He's done that well in that round. Towards the end, you could see Christian getting in a bit closer. And here you can hear the crowd getting riled up here. Chance from both sides, from each university. To show their support. It's great support from the students of each university here. And I'm sure this will last until the end of the night. It's going to be very interesting to see what the final scores look like after all 12 rounds. Yes, yes. 12 bouts. I have a sneak feeling Teller might take this one. So Teller is up ready. His stool is out of the ring. Christian is a little bit hesitant to get up there. He was a little bit slower. Let's see what he can bring to round two. I believe Tallow won that first round. I've got him 10-9 up so far after round one. Christian going in very fast there. He's not wasting time in round two. But does it play right into his hands? Is Tallow still connecting more? Energy levels really stepped up here in the ring. Both fighters have come out flying there in round yeah, two. Christian seems to be attacking Tala's body. He's caught him here. And the referee separates. Here we go again. Tired hands there from Christian, I must say. Maybe the he, threw a lot of early, he threw a lot of early fi uh, uh, fists in this round. He's up against the ropes here. I think Tala is the more concise so far. He just keeps sticking behind that jab and he keeps getting through the hands. Keeps getting through the gloves of Christian. Good little slip there. Oh, Got a decent, a decent left rings. hand right there from Tala. And he pushes him against the ropes once again. He's come up. Do you reckon Tala needs to press harder in those situations? You know, maybe I, to land that blow? I think he knows he can stay at distance. If he gets close, if he gets the punches in, but I'm not sure he needs to. I'm not sure he needs to. You can see Christian's face getting a lot more red there as well. As the fight goes on. Tala is in control so far, but you never know what's going to happen. The crowd egging both fighters on here. What a great fight we are witnessing. Tala, like you've been saying, kept the it's distance. Final, final seconds of round two here. And Christian changed it around. But I believe the referee. Great, great The ref did not round. have to separate there. Dan, who takes that for you? I believe Tala threw the more the more serious punches in that round. You can see Christian sat on his chair now, looks a lot more looks a lot more tired. He's trying to get his air back. But I believe he's gonna need something big in the final round for him to come back from this. What do you think Christian's brother will be saying to him right now? I think as any brother should, he should be proud anyway. You never know what's gonna happen in this final round, but he will be giving him words of wisdom. I think he just needs to not rush his way forward in round three. And he needs Tala's to wait for the right time. Tala knows he can stay at distance. But also, Christian has been able to get a few punches in at some times. Sorry about that, Dan. You know, of course. We've, um, we've got a bit of a makeshift set up here. We can't quite hear each other very well. So if we are speaking over each other, we do apologise. Um, but yeah, here comes the third round. Tala might have taken this one for Hallam to make it 1-1, one, one, but who knows? Maybe you, Christian. You never know what Christian Shooter's gonna bring. We don't know. A great start here from Tala. But Christian's come out with the energy. Let's hope it lasts. Here we go. We've seen some big punches in both fights so far. None of the fighters out of all four have gone down though yet. Mm. Composure. A, cou a couple counts in the first fight from the referee. But in this fight, none, yet, none have yet. How much, Dan, in this final round does composure come into play? Composure certainly comes into play on the Hallam side. And as you can see there, there was a little bit of a wobble from Christian Shooter. Do you reckon that's his confidence? Or do you reckon he's now thinking, he'd, I've got something to prove here? 
Well, it seems like... I think it's that. Talos punches do seem to be getting through the gloves of Christian, straight through the middle of them. There's not a lot of variation there. But also, there doesn't need to be. He certainly does have the reach. He's a lot taller. You can see in the close encounters how tall he is. Christian's quick to go for Tala, but that's quick. Tala's looking to finish this, this round off. I think both fighters have come out energetic. Honestly, their legs, their legs look tired from both sets of fighters here, but that was a great jab there. Props to both Tala and Christian for putting on a great show. Coming into the latter of this second Varsity 2024 boxing fight. Tala Damn. certainly it's the more powerful of the punches. Christian's almost rooted to his feet here. Ref separates them. Not the most movement Ten for Christian. seconds to the take. The last seconds of the bout. Number two. There goes the bell. And there goes the bell. Dan. A big round of applause from both sets of fans. You've called the score for the first two rounds of this bout. Who takes it for the third? I think Tala took the first two. The third one, both fighters got involved, but again, I'm not sure Christian Shooter did enough to win in that final round. Well, so I believe this fight will go to Tala, to the Hallam student. Well, let's invite the, um, what's his name? And the ring announcer is now on stage. The announcer, forgot, I completely forgot the word, you know, it was stuck. Let's now, let's now allow, <laughs> I've lost all my words. <laughs> to get the result. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number two in the red corner. And that is the win for Hallam. A big cheer from one corner of the octagon. I don't think that comes as a massive surprise after the three rounds there. Tyler did have the reach. He struck behind the jab very well. Although Christian put in a superb effort against the giant. <laughs> And that means it is 1-1 going into bout number three. It is, you know. Um, I think that was very much deserved from Tala. He really showed that composure. Um, really showed that composure and the tenacity to continue throughout those three rounds of that fight. That takes it to 1-1, Dan. Takes it to 1-1. And Charlie, who is going to be to up next the on the roster? Well, from the University the of Sheffield, we have... Dolly Forrester, last year criminology student from Gloucestershire. Boxing is her first, her first sport, and this is her first year in the club. And walking to the ring now, who's this we have? So we have Iona Bayasi from the um, Hallam University. One, one and a half years boxing, and this is her first bout. A third year professional policing student who is hoping to join the police when she finishes at uni. Forrester. Oh, a few more boos from that side this time for Dolly Forrester. It does feel a lot more even in the crowd, don't you think, Charlie? Yeah, um, a very, very warm welcome for both the fighters here from the crowd. Great, great to hear. Um, and we're just waiting on Dolly Forrester. Here she, she is. She, she makes her way to the, the ring. <laughs> she walks to the ring. Here we go, good luck to both fighters. Last year, I must say, the women fights were fantastic. A lot of energy shown throughout each fight, throughout each round. She was throughout. smiling a lot there was Dolly Forrester. She's dancing in the stage. She's very confident, isn't she? She looks like she's there to have fun. Here we go. And there will be head guards in this one. As they put the gloves on the fighters. So, Dan, do you reckon it's now tied, 1-1? Do you reckon that's weighing on the fighters' shoulders at all? Well, we're still in the early doors, aren't we? I think as we get to the latter stages of the night, it's going to weigh more on the fighters' shoulders to bring it home for their respective universities. But so far, I think each fighter just needs to go out there, show what they can do, and put on a show. The fans are loving it so far. We want to keep the energy up all night. We hope you viewers at home have been enjoying it. We certainly have enjoyed the first oh, two fights. I've been a very great energetic. Time. Great, great time. Um, both first bouts. Yeah, it seems to be the seems to be the case for all three fights so far, doesn't Nerves it? Nerves will be here, Dan. 
the composure that we've spoken about, Teller was really a talisman for that. He carried himself very well. Um, anything these two fighters can take from the past two bouts? Well, sorry about that, Charlie. I was just, just gathering whether... whether a head guard will be on Dolly Forrester for this fight, or is it just on the Hallam students? Not 100% sure. Mm. But yeah, sorry, back to your question. Yeah. After the first Anything two bouts, take, bouts, sorry, uh, losing my words here. <laughs> After the first two bouts, it's very energetic from both sides. You can tell that both sets of fighters, I think all the way through we're gonna see tonight, that both Hallam students and University of Sheffield students have been working their bottoms off for varsity. Obviously, it's a massive occasion in Sheffield. It is a sold out arena tonight. There are a few seats that you can see. I'm sure people will be getting drinks. Hope the head guard, Dan. And the head guard does go on for Holly, Dolly Forrester. Here and we go. We are ready for your four, third, sorry, fight of the night. One night it's been so far. I must say, the crowd, what a great performance they put into. Screaming, Certainly. shouting, putting in that support for both university fighters. You know, and adding on for what you said, Dan, you know, these, this is an occasion they might, these, these two fighters might never, ever three, fight again. Gentlemen. You know, this is such a great opportunity. And yes. What a great occasion. It's a guess. Obviously, Dolly Forrester, a first year criminal only student. You never know if she wins today. She might kick on. She might be the club captain next year. And there we go. Both fighters look very up for it. Representing the University of Sheffield, Dolly Forrester. A big round of applause there for both fighters. They're both bouncing. They're both up for it. The referee brings them close. They will touch gloves. There's respect between all fighters here from each university. I'm sure we'll see that for the rest of the night and through the rest of Varsity altogether. Looks like we have a referee change too here. Here we go. Who will take their respective university into the lead? Well, let's find out now with the third. And bout number three starts here. Straight in there from Dolly Forrester. It was a great jab to start us off. A good combination there. It's a great start here from the University of Sheffield student. That may have been a slip. There will be a count from the referee. It will count as a knockdown. It was a great start there by Dolly Forrester. Straight great, in there. Great energy from both fighters. I must admit, what a fantastic start to the round. Even though and it was a slip, straight in it once again. Matter. Straight in once again here is Dolly Forrester. I think arena. the Hallam student will be looking to gain a little bit of breath. The arena is on their feet. What a start. What's Some great punches thrown here from the University of Sheffield student. You just wonder if this is going to be able to last for the next two rounds as well. Both fighters bouncing still. They're both so energetic. Both taking it each to each other still. Looks like Union Option is pushing it into the corner. And it's a great combination there. Well, the subtle one, two, one twos just keep to be working here for Dolly Forrester. Every time she throws her left, it opens up for her right immediately. Some great resilience from Hallam here, you know, to eat those punches and keep going forward. Yes. I think the coach is from Iona. Oh, and that is a timeout there from the referee. I think that's just to secure a head guard. Yes. Before they carry on. She's back in though. Here we go. And the bout will get back underway now. Maybe that was a good little timeout from the Hallam student to gain a little bit of breath left as we go into the last seconds of round one. Some great punches thrown here from both fighters. I do believe Dolly Forrester had certainly the best of round one. How would you sum up that first round? You know, biggest oh. takeaways. 
Well, both fighters came into it with a lot of energy. Dolly Forrester walking up to the walking up to the ring. She was dancing. She was smiling. Not a care in the world for the Uni of Sheffield student. And it almost showed. She was straight in there, throwing the jabs, throwing the one-twos. Every time she threw the jab, it opened up for a right arm immediately for the hook. And I think it's going to show. I think I, I'm not sure how much any fighter could take of those one-twos. So it's going to be interesting to see what both coaches say. I think both both coaches, you know, offering that support. But I, it, it will be interesting, you know, because they both went in with that energy, the tenacity, with those one-twos, like you were saying. Just let's just hope it continues, you know. And as the coaches make their way out of the rings, both fighters up to their feet quickly. Here we go. As round two commences very shortly. And we're back underway. Straight in again, aren't they, Dan? Both fighters are trying to secure the middle of the ring. Oh, you can see the head movement of Iona every time the punch lands. A big jab there. But you'd He's say... Won. She had a very slow start to round one. I she's believe won. that round two, she started off a little bit better. These one twos coming out again from the Uni of student. Hallam seems to have defended them very well. It's a lot better defending here from the Hallam student, certainly. Is that a little bit of blood flowing from the nose? I can see that. You know, I should have put my glasses on down. <laughs> should have put the glasses on, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, from where we stood, it is slightly hard, but I believe that is blood flowing from the maroon, the maroon soldier's nose there. As Dolly Forrester keeps coming forward, she keeps landing those jabs, and that is another count go. from the referee. The second count for the Hallam student. Do you reckon that's? I, I, you know, Dan, I actually think it is three fights, and then the bout, the bout is over. Um, so she is playing on slim water here, the Hallam student. I think the doctor will have a look at that nose here. Um, it does how look do very think, bloody. How do you think the Hallam student's feeling? You know, she's, she, the fight's been called, she's got the bloody nose. And that is... And that is it. That is fight number three over. And the fans have realised, you can hear the cheers from the University of Sheffield section. And that is fight, bout, sorry, bout number three over. And that's Dolly Forrester's win in the second round. Great performance from the University of Sheffield. That is 2-1 now to the University of Sheffield. You can't, you can't take anything away from the Hallam student. She fought with a heart. It is her first bout, obviously. And she'll t I think she'll take away a lot of positives from this. She'll go back to the changing room. She'll work at it again. Um, you never know, you might see her again next year. I hope we do. I hope we do. I thoroughly enjoyed that fight, Dan. Your biggest takeaway? Well, it was very energetic from Dolly Forrester. It was those one-twos. Those one-twos were deadly in that fight. The nose might have been bleeding at the la latter stages of round one. Her face did look quite red, and that's not just the head guard that was on her head. And, yeah, it was a professional performance there from the amateur boxer and she takes the win in round two of our third bout of the evening Charlie now here we go and Joe with the ladies and gentlemen of bout number three after the referee stopped the contest in favour of the blue corner Forrester the final decision is here University of Sheffield two to one sorry Dan I couldn't quite hear you then what did you ask me, sorry? I didn't ask you anything. No. Well, no. fantastic performance from both fighters. A lot of respect between both fighters, both smiling after that bout. And Dolly Forrester, a very good show there she put on. Now, we and are that is setting our up for the... Sorry about that, Charlie. No, it's okay, it's okay. No, I really am, just, just put it out there. But I can't quite hear Dan all the time. We are doing our best. I hope you are enjoying our commentary at home. If you are watching, shout out to Forge TV. If you are 
running this live stream, doing a fantastic job, all student-led. Um, also, catch your catch the report tomorrow on Forge Press. You will get the ins and outs from the fighters and the scores in their report tomorrow. But we're coming in down now for the four bouts. Great energy so far the from the corner. first three fights. Biggest takeaway. Well, biggest takeaway would be, I think the pressure does subtly start to mount up within these fighters. They all want to look. I think, realistically, they all do want to look for a stoppage. So, on the Hallam side, who do we have walking in right we now? We have Abdu Diallo coming in here. It's the student's first amateur bout for Hallam. He looks like a big lad. He comes in, shows a lot of confidence. How do you think he's feeling? He looked walking up to the ring there, full of confidence. I don't think he will have a nerve in his body that tells him he's not up for this fight. You know, it's great to see that confidence, you know, walking in, you know, ready, ready to get involved. Let's hope Uniolf brings the same confidence, the same energy, and we're in for a great fight. Of course, and representing the Uni of Sheffield in the fourth bout is Michael Larrier, who started boxing at a youth club in Dagenham and ended his corner, sessions Michael at Daggers Boxing Club back there. He joined initially in Sheffield for fitness, but grew to love the sport and takes boxing very seriously. You know, Dan, last year I used to actually live next to the Hallam Boxing um, yes. Centre. And it was always great to see, you know, during the Bar City period, all the fighters, you know, building that community, really enjoying themselves. It's clear that all the fighters so far have enjoyed themselves out there. It is a huge occasion, isn't it, for the boxers and for the fans as well. And I'm sure bout number four will bring us the same excitement as number three, which was our first stoppage of the evening. We are live on Forge TV's live stream on YouTube. Both looking similar heights here, aren't they? They do look similar heights. They do look similar heights. I think uh, Abdul Diallo looks slightly bigger. We'll see when they get closer together. Obviously, Michael Larrier wearing the black and gold has stepped in the ring now. Both looking very confident and ready to take on this fourth round. Of course, Uniarv looking to stretch the lead here. Two, three, two, one. You'd Hallam looking to draw it level to two to two. Let's see what goes out. Yes, well, Hallam haven't been ahead yet over the course of the evening so Hallam far. Before, Let's see if they can draw level the and push on from there. Three, two, many We've got some exciting it's fights up next. The There's a Who's ring announcer introducing University. Abdul Another Shh. great reception. He look, he's got that confidence. And his opponent in the blue corner, representing the University of Sheffield, Michael Elliott. Hello, both hello, fighters hello, with the head hello, nods hello, 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 as their names are being announced. Gallery. They're both up for this fight, you can tell. And no smiles given there. Staring each other down as the referee gives them instructions. Here we go. Let's see who takes it. And a for respectful your, touch of gloves there. For your fourth bout, the bell rings. Has the bell rung? No? Here we go. And bout number four is underway here. It's another three, two minute round bout. And again, once again, both fighters come out. Come out the doors very early, looking very energetic. Bigger fighters than we've previously seen in the last three fights. Nothing much seems to have landed so far. Do you reckon they're just feeling each other out? Ooh. Yeah, maybe slightly Ooh. more sensitive, but as soon as you've said Ooh. that, you seem to have jinxed it there, Charlie. Both <laughs> fighters throwing. Great energy from both there. I'm not sure how many of those landed. Is that a real confidence boost for both fighters? It will be. The maroon competitor there, walking back over to his corner. He was a little bit pushed against the ropes. You could see the ring bouncing there. What do you make of it so far, Charlie Fenton? Well, I think both fighters have coming out with that composure that quality that we haven't quite seen in over two fights, apart from Tala. 
Um, both seem to be very, very, very constructive with their punches, which ones they're throwing. I think it's going to make out for a fantastic and fascinating, fascinating bout. Your yeah. takedown. Well, I think so far out of the other three fights and this one, we haven't seen a glass chin yet. Obviously, the Hallam competitor in the last fight, she got hit very hardly quite a lot of times and did well to stay in the fight for as long as she did. Are we going to see the same again? A lot of punches have been landing so far, although we haven't seen... A bit of a too soon. A bit of a sneaky, sneaky one there from the Hallam fighter. Sorry, from the Unial fighter to catch the Hallam. And that'll be the end guard. of round one. Dan, who takes it for you? For me, personally, I think it's very even. I think it's very even. Your, your, your score, your take. Well, I'm going to give that a 10-10 for both fighters there. Both came out very early. Not a lot of punches did land. Both have got the guard up well when they had to. Obviously, they had that moment of madness, we'll call it, where both fighters were in one corner. We're in the corner towards the golden black side. And... Yeah, it just got all a bit feisty, didn't it? You know, in a second. I couldn't have put it any better. It was almost like scrambled eggs in there. Just, you know, see, seeing what they can get, you know, and it was it was great to see. Um, the crowd seemed to be enjoying themselves. Words of wisdom from the coaches. What is Hallam coach saying to the Hallam fighter? Well, I just think he'll be saying the exact same uh, as... Uh, I think he'll be saying the exact same as what the Uni of Sheffield coach will be saying as well. They've both just got to carry on how they're doing. They're putting on a show. They're both very energetic. If they can keep it up for the next two, four rounds, then obviously this is going to make up for a very entertaining bout. Now, Michael Abdul looking, Diallo's quick there. Michael is looking very defensive too. Seems to have caught him slightly. A bit of madness there. Both down. boxers are flowing, throwing a lot of punches here, aren't they? Do you reckon that's what the coaches might have told them? Yeah, sometimes if it is your first boxing fight, I can imagine, or your first amateur bout, sorry, I can imagine that you almost give in to what your heart is saying over what your head might be saying. So they will want to come out, they want to put on a show, they might want an early finish. Like we said though, they might never get this opportunity again to fight in a crowd that is full this evening. Thank you to everyone who came, who is in the crowd and watching. Um, and those watching at home, thank you for tuning in. Ref seems to have paused it. He allows the fight to continue. It's quick here from Michael Larrier. He's always quick out of the fence, isn't he? Very much. Seems to have caught Abdul Abu out of. He's off throwing his a lot more slightly. punches. Certainly. Against the ring. How can he get himself out of this? Well, he just needs to bring it in close. Hope the referee. Oh, and the referee calls for the count here. Abdul Diallo does look hurt there. He will take his time for this count until he's ready to continue. And the fight is back underway. He's, that's he, that's Straight back on the defence there, Abdul Diallo. Would have done a great world of good. For Michael, who did seem to be lacking a little bit of confidence, he's straight back in. Let's see what the Hallam fighter can bring back in. And the fans chant his name, Michael, 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 as round two finishes there. Another great round in this bout. Another almost even round again, but I do think Michael Larrier could have just taken that one. Looking slightly heavy at the end there. You yeah, know, both fighters did. Yeah, look, both fighters looking slightly heavy there. How, how do you think, Dan, they can, you know, revive themselves for that last surge? You know, it seemed very even. Um, who, how do you think, you know, they can, they can work through mentally to push through and hopefully get their win, that win for their respective university? Well, I think on the University of Sheffield front, it'll be same old, same old so far. I think he was on top in that last round, only slightly but he was showing signs towards the end of possibly even finishing the, finishing the bout. On the other side, on the Hallam side, Abdul Diar Abdu Diallo might be thinking something slightly different. He might need to try and come out of the fence a little bit more energetic. He was on the defence a lot more in that round. And if he wants anything out of this fight, it's going to need a big third and final round. Here we go. 
Here we go. And straight out of the fence, it's more madness. There's no defence in this round so far. We've seen signs, haven't we, from both fighters. Caught in them, didn't he? Alan Fighter caught Michael. Tiredness does seem to be creeping in. But let's hope they can keep that energy until the end. I have to say it's been four cracking fights so far, hasn't it? Very much so. Fascinating. Each one's been different in its own unique way. We had a very, 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 very good start to the evening. And Abdu Diallo does look the more tired, but Michael Larrier has thrown less punches so far in this round. Obviously, we've had more madness of both fighters just swinging at the beginning of this round. We've had a couple of occasions in this fight so far. What are we thinking, Charlie? You know, I just think, I just think, you know, they need to, I think Abdu needs to, you know, get, go in the defensive, conserve some energy. He seems to be hugging quite a lot, which seems he, he does seem he might be out of his breath. Um, but, you know, if he could just dig in for the last couple of seconds here, he might, and finish off very strong, he might be able to take something. But on that note, Michael's coming with the energy. Caught Abdu here. Referee looks to seem to be separating. Close there. It did look like Abdu Diallo did get a shot off there. It was a nice hook. But Michael Larry is so strong. He is. He's good at leaning, isn't he, he Michael does. Larry? He does Very lean good. on his opponent quite a lot. It is tiring getting leaned on. Who would you say has dictated this fight so far? I think both fighters have been quite reckless in this fight. As we go into the final seconds, let's see if anyone can change that. It's been a slower third round, a lot less defending from both fronts. Tired arms there at the end. What a fantastic fight we had on show for us. We have two more fights to show you before the break. Three more, sorry, before we have the three break. Three more fights before the break. Um, sorry for that mistake. Of course. Thanks, Dan. You know, filling me in there. Um, yeah, three more before we do have a break. Um, so you know, we have a lot. We have a lot more action to bring to you. Um, at the break, we'll be panning you back to our presenters. But now you're stuck with me and Dan. So I don't think that's. I, I think they're quite lucky, you know. You stuck with me and you. I think the viewers are quite lucky as well, yes. Yeah. Um, we now have the announcer to call the winner. Dan, for you, who takes it? Who Michael put Larrier in? Michael from the University of Sheffield might have just edged that. There's a lot of respect for both fighters, as you can see. But we'll see what the scorecards say from the judges and we'll hand it over to our ring announcer. It's a close one. And it's the Uni of Sheffield student, Michael Larrier, taking home the third win of the evening in the fourth bout of the evening. And that puts it, that puts the University of Sheffield 3-1 up, doesn't it, Charlotte? Yes, it does. I must say, though, fantastic performance from Abu. Um, fantastic from Abu, sorry. Very, very, very well done from both fighters, you know. Let's see, let's hope now that the Hallam, Hallam lot don't lose that confidence, you know, because so much can change. They still have plenty of fights to go. Let's see if that quality that has been shown and the tenacity, the energy can stay throughout the remaining fights. Um, big credits though to Michael, fantastic performance. Was looking, was looking tired at the end, but you know, I think he did just enough to keep himself on the winning, winning side of things. Um, but yeah, so we're done. Four amazing fights, we're on to our fifth. Four brilliant fights, which we're expecting it so far. I wasn't expecting it to be so energetic. I know, neither, you know, it's, it's flown by. Fantastic, fantastic performances. Um, looks like we have had a referee change too. Um, looks like they're doing two fights each. Um, but yeah, Dan, can you talk me through this fifth fight? Who are the fighters going head to head? So coming into the ring first is the Hallam student, Daniel Custon. He's a student nurse, and this is once again his first amateur bout for his university. There's a lot of fans stood up there. You can see his friends in the crowd chanting his name as he walks over to the ring. He'll get his gloves checked by the referee before we welcome the University of Sheffield 
student Fabio Monteregado Linares. I must say, for all these fighters coming in there, coming into this ring for their first fight in front of this crowd, fair play. This must be hard, hard work anyway. But you know, in front of this crowd, incredible. Dan, who is the University of Sheffield fighter? So Fabio is a third. Fabio is in his third year at the club. A previous fight with Sheffield City Boxing Club. An aggressive come forward fighter who wants to get on the inside is what our inside and all his reports. So obviously he has, he's had previous. He's had previous. He's had a previous amateur bout uh, before. He's the only one of the fighters so far that we've uh, had the pleasure of commentating on to have a previous amateur bout. So let's see what he can bring to this. Surely that must work in his favour. You know, been in the ring before. You know, sort of been able to get get to know. Um, but yeah, you never know what goes down in these amateur boxing boxing bouts. These boxing, you know. So let's hope you know. Same energy, same passion, same tenacity. Let's hope the same tenacity is kept through this fight. Great reception for both fighters. Another great reception for both fighters. The fans really are pulling for their respective universities here. And this is almost, it's just as big an occasion as it is for the fighters, for the fans. It's absolutely massive here. It no, neither university wants to lose and I think Hallam have to show something big in this fight if they want to try and stay in the competition. Once again, it's a very energetic start from both fighters. Testing the waters there. Daniel. They both look like they want to get in close together. They do. A couple body shots there from the Hallam student. They both look very similar height, very similar reach as well, don't they, Charlie? They do. Fabio seems to have that little bit of confidence, you know, having done it before. Um, but nothing to take from Daniel, who's put in, for, the, for his first 10, 20 seconds, a lot of energy. Seems to be testing the waters here. A few, few nice combinations oh. from yeah. Fabio. It looked like he almost got an uppercut in there. That would have been a powerful shot there from Fabio if it lands. He is going for the uppercut more times. You haven't really seen that so far in the previous bouts. What can what can Daniel do here, Dan? What can he do oh, to the really? Hall the Hallam student Ooh. may just need to just keep it in close as well, but just avoid that uppercut. Looked as if Daniel caught Fabio there, but still going on strong. Here we go. Full arms behind the punches here from Fabio and Daniel in this bout. And once again, it's a very energetic first round from both fighters. Let's see if he can keep up in round two and three. Referees, Dan, how do you think they've done so far? Oh, they've been very professional. They've allowed it to come close. They've allowed them to separate. They've given them enough time away from each other. And, yeah, real professional performance from both referees so far. I must say they've been very... Very respectful to let things be a little bit rowdy in there, in the ring. And some very good shots there from the Hallam student, Daniel Custon. There goes the bell. Who takes it for you, Dan? I personally, very, very even round. I must say though, Fabio has got those, punch, got those punches in, those combinations, the uppercuts, like you were saying, a lot more consistency. Um, I think Daniel, you know, he, he needs to grow in that confidence, you know, to really step up to the occasion um, and show Fabio that, you know, he's here. For you, though? Well, I think for the majority of that round, I would say Fabio was edging it, but towards the end, he already looked a little bit leggy there. We'll see if, it, see if he comes out as quick as he did off the fence once again in round two. But he did look slightly leggy there. He allowed Daniel a couple of punches at the end, a couple of hooks at the end. So, we'll see. We'll see. You know, as they say, Slow and steady sometimes does win the race. And I do um, not believe this bout is far. I do not, and I 
do believe, sorry, that this fight, this bout is far from over. <laughs> you know, something in the air, isn't there? Yeah. No, I can't. I was <laughs> Sometimes you can't get the words out. It's too energetic. <laughs> Once again, a blistering start from both opponents. Seems to almost have him in a headlock then. Straight in though from both. I think it was a quicker start this time from the from the maroon fighter. Daniel has grown in confidence, I must say. Um, maybe it was the end of that last round. Some wise words from his coach, maybe. Who knows? You know, and have that inner belief. Obviously, he is against a fighter in Fabio, who has had an amateur bout before. He will understand what it means to the crowd. He will have had a crowd before as well, which is something that not a lot of not a lot of boxers will experience, would they? For you, though, a minute in, pretty much halfway through this fight, who's taking it for you? Oh, I think it's almost even, Stevens, so far. Good from both fighters. They've both thrown a lot of punches. Daniel Moore this round. Fabio Moore the last round. Fabio looking a little bit leggy. Might have given a little bit too much in that first round. Um, Daniel seems to have grown a lot of confidence here. The crowd are loving, loving this fight. I don't know if you can hear Hallam Lot really getting behind Daniel. Shouts of Hallam and Yuna around the octagon as we come to the latter stages of round two. We're in the final seconds of this round. A little, ball, a little bit of, seems to be a little bit of ballroom dancing there. Couldn't quite get his arm <laughs> off uh, Daniel there. A few words maybe shared between the two fighters as well towards the end of that bout. It looked like Fabio was sharing a few words to his opponent in Maroon in the red corner and I actually believe that Daniel might have taken that round a but little it was bit very tight once again could go either way on the scorecard so far a little bit of Slayton just go a long way um, you never know what the judges have been scoring it mm. do you think judges so far done a good job they have I think they've been very fair obviously we had a third in the third bout we had a stoppage in round two but so far I'd agree with them for the other three results. So we'll just see what happens again. It might be even going into the final round. All is to play for here for both fighters. The coaches will probably know that. And now the fighters will know that going into the final round of bout number five, Fabio versus Daniel. Now Dan, Fabio is to take this. That pushes it to 4-1 to the University of Sheffield. Yes, Let's see. If Daniel can bring it back to 3 2. Yes, it does feel like taking it to 4 1 is a huge advantage going into the sixth bout of the evening. You just never know with these two. They both throw a lot of punches. Couple body shots there from Daniel. He never seems to stop giving them body shots. I must say, this I think this is one of the most matched fight we've seen so far yeah I believe so they've all been very they've all been very fairly matched I have to say but this one so far as the fans just seem to be a little bit a little bit more riled up towards the end of this bout the crowd slowly slowly bringing that extra bit of energy to the fighters and a shake of the head from Daniel. Maybe he's not pleased with himself in that little exchange. But both fighters are performing extremely well in this fight. A couple great punches thrown there from Fabio. But straight back at him is Daniel. Fabio does love coming in close, doesn't he? Do you think it's worked for him? I think it is working for him. It's frustrating, it's frustrating the Hallam fighter so far. But he's not being able to throw. And Fabio has been getting those cheeky throws in after a little close exchanges. He backs off here though, does he Fabio? Daniel pushes forward and Fabio leans on him once again. Here we go, it's the latter end of the fifth fight of the evening. And we're into our final seconds here. 
could go either way. Both fighters will know that, giving it all. Great, great, great performance from these two. Hugging it out. What a fantastic performance that was. I hope you guys at home have really enjoyed that fight. I know me and Jan enjoyed that fight. For me, favourite so far. What a fantastic fight that was. Oh, Though, Dan, who takes it? What is, who do you think, you know, got that slight upper edge? Well, it seemed to be the closest fight of the evening, I have to say. It could, it could very well be a draw. Could well be a draw. I don't think it will go to unanimous decision. A split decision at most, but it may well be a draw in this fifth bout, which will keep the score as it is. Uni of Sheffield could remain two points ahead here, but you just do not know what the scorecards will say. Here's your ring announcement. Oh. And that is another win for the University of Sheffield. Very happy about that one. Maybe slightly surprised. Maybe slightly surprised. He looked like he did have to work very hard for that victory. Daniel put in a fantastic performance, I must say. You know, do you reckon, he, do you reckon he's going to be disappointed having put in such a great performance? Well, maybe. I mean, in round two and three, it was so tight. Maybe it was that first round that did it. The uppercuts that Fabio was throwing. Yeah, those, those close encounters might have done it. The leaning. He, just, he might have played that very smart there. He wears his flag on his shoulders as they take a photo together. Very respectful between these two fighters, as it has been so far all evening. Um, five fights in. What is your take? Well, Hallam. 4-1 to the University of Sheffield. Hallam looking to need right, now right to the really to stick themselves out of this the definitely you Jack know Price. three three points down you know tough 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 thing to come back from especially you know um coming in now um you know um you big props though to the university of sheffield great great performances but Dan, talk to us sixth fight so coming out to murder on the dance floor maybe he's about to put a show in the boxing ring <laughs> is Jack Price. He's from Newark on Trent and studies psychology at Hallam University. He initially wanted to join basketball, but he missed the trials. Well, he studies psychology. He must know how he must be looking to get inside the University of Sheffield fighter's head. Who is? The and University his Sheffield opponent fighter. in the blue corner, Pat Mullen. Welcome, welcome by the ring announcer to the stage now is Pat Mullen. He's been boxing for two years and is making his amateur debut. He's supposed to be in varsity 2023, but unfortunately broke his arm while training. So he missed out last year. He'll be looking forward to putting on a show this year. But there's a little bit of experience on the side of Jack Price as he's completed two sparring days, but this is his first amateur bout. Yes, yes. Both fighters got that confidence. Similar height. And Similar looking, both got that fringe. Yes. <laughs> Let's see which fringe gets flicked back <laughs> from those punches today. Um, but yeah, a lot of energy from the uni of fighters stepping into the ring. Into our sit fight. Let's see if Jack. Well, number six, ladies and gentlemen, is another competition Four. consisting of three Alan. two minute rounds. Introducing in the red corner, representing the Sheffield Alum University, Jack Price. A big round of applause here for the Hallam student. The coach trying to rally. And his opponent in the blue corner was to the University of Sheffield, Pat Mullen. Price in the red, Mullen Both in the blue corner for you, Mr. Harry Conlon. Any pressure, do you think, on Jack here to, you know, maybe start a bit of a revival for Hallam? Well, I think he knows what's on his shoulders now. You don't want to go four round, four bouts down going into the halfway point of the evening but he's just got to focus on his own game for now make his way through this bout another three two minute round match up again the energy on show first 20, 10 20 seconds both fighters going for it 
ref watching on with glaring eyes to make sure our fighters are safe. More energy shown in every round of the matchup so far we've seen this evening. More so than we've seen that I've seen from Tyson Fury, his old career. Different fighters they are. And here we have our sixth amateur bout of the evening. Very energetic start in round one for both fighters. A nice, a nice land there from Pat Mullen. But Jack Price has also landed a couple jabs so far as well. Both seem to be testing the water. This is the first sort of fight we've seen today, Dan, you know, where the fighters have seemed to be, you know, really trying to grow into the fight rather than going straight in head first. Different approach, how to they're both handling it there. A nice, a nice overhand there from Pat Mullen. But yeah, oh! oh! A big knockdown there for the University of Whoa. Sheffield student. He caught him again with a subtle overhand, and it's over. The referee calls it. We have seen the first glass jaw of the evening. What, what a punch that was. Looked like a bit of an, an undercut, uppercut there from the University of Sheffield fighter. Dan, talk me through it. Well, it almost there was the overhand from Pat Mullen, which looked like it connected very well there on Jack Price's head. And then he just, he just caught him perfectly. I think Price went in for a jab. He left himself open and Pat Mullen caught himself very perfectly there. That is the first stoppage in the first round. Uh, sorry, that is the first victory. Um, been hard in the first six round. After referee stop the contest in favour of the blue corner, Mullen. First, first round win of the evening. First, first round win here. What a fantastic, fantastic display that was from the Uni of Sheffield fighter. You know, that takes it now to 5-1 in the standings. What do you think? How do you think Uni of fighter is feeling in this moment? Oh, I think he'll be ecstatic with himself. A first round stoppage there. Absolutely brilliant display from Pat Mullen. He connected quite a few times. Both fighters looked like they were energetic but Pat Mullen proved too strong there. He was holding a card that says Princess Pat. Maybe that's <laughs> his nickname. He is holding a card. That was Given um, to him by, I'm sure, one of his friends. And Princess Pat Mullen comes out on top. Now, great, great sportsmanship shown here from both fighters. Exchanging a few words, taking a picture. Um, Uniol fighter must be over the moon with that. Um, but big shout out to the Haddam fighter in the maroon. Fantastic performance, big confidence to get into the ring in the first place. So shout out to Haddam fighter, you've done a fantastic job. But Dan, is this our final fight? It's it's like to invite you know, to the ring set from it's our blown from the by. Just as, just as our radio showed us. Yes, it does. On Forge Radio, that is Ramble On, usually every Monday morning at 11 a.m. Captures then if you are if you enjoyed our commentary, you know you'll enjoy it again on Ramble on. But Dan, Hallam, fighter. Here we have Ollie Creighton walking to the ring. It's his first amateur bout. It doesn't look like it there, does it? He's got a Conor McGregor style walk to him <laughs> as he makes his way to the ring. Different sport, could be the same outcome though. Conor McGregor loved his stoppages. Does Oli Creighton have what it takes to bring another stoppage, which will, which could be our third of the evening? You know, yeah. Fabio. Sorry to interrupt there, Dan. Fabio, you know, had he, he had that confidence because that previous fight he did have. Will Let's see if Oli's several white collar bouts can, you know, give him that confidence to push through. But the uni old fighter, Dan. So here. With the ring announcer, welcome him to the ring. We have Will McDermott. He's, a he's in his first year in the boxing club, and this is his first bout. He's had very limited experience in boxing before, and he did require no surgery in the past as a result of sparring, which kept him out for a little while. 
His favourite shot is a left hook to the body. Will he be throwing one today? Ah, let's see. Let's see. I hope so. You know, he's kind of given away his game plan here. Almost, almost. Almost, almost. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe double bluff. Maybe it is his right, right hook that he enjoys using. Yeah, well. But let's see if Ollie can defend himself, you know, because if, if he is, if he is, you know, if that is his favourite shot, he, he will be using it. He'll be looking to pull it out at every opportunity. Uh, but yeah, Dan, about seven. How do you think the fighters are feeling? Well, there's a lot of pressure now creeping up on the Hallam students. Each one of them that steps in the ring, there's more pressure on them to Bow win. number seven, ladies and gentlemen, is another altogether. contest consisting of three Let's too many rounds. How Ollie Gray does in, in the, the corner, seventh bout of the evening. Hallam University. And our final bout, Holly we will be commentating. Crater. We have enjoyed commentating for you guys. And his opponent in the blue corner, representing the University of Sheffield, Will McDermott. Crichton in the red, McDermott in the blue. Your referee, Mr. Mark Downing. And a lot of support shown there once again for both fighters. As you can see, Will McDermott in the blue corner looks slightly taller, doesn't he? He does. Than the Hallam fighter. Yes. But who knows? We did see the slight height advantage in the third fight, in the third bout we had. But you know, who knows where it might take us. Both fighters looking very confident, looking forward to this fight. Again, the energy to bring the beginning. We've seen height playing advantage once so far this evening. Oh, good start, good start there from the Hallam fighter. It just looked like Will McDermott stepped back slightly into the corner there. Oh, it was a great punch throw, it was a great overhand throw in there from Ollie Creighton. And he's come out a lot speedier than the University of Sheffield fighter so far. Yeah, Will does look quite fluttered out there, doesn't he? He just needs to, you know, get that composed head and maybe he'll be able to, you know, really dig back at Ollie. But great, great start, Dan. Great start. Yeah, so far, Ollie Creighton seems to the one getting in closer, throwing the more body shots, even though it's Will McDermott whose favourite shot is the left hook to the body. Let's see if he can manage to work his way into this fight. But so far, complete control from the Hallam student, which is needed for the fans he as well. He caught him just then. Oh! Oh, it's a great catch there. Two catches in a row, Dan. A whole world of done. Good done. Good for Will there. A whole world of good. World of good. As you know, he, like I said, he was looking a little bit flustered. But you know, I'm sure they will have done fantastic for his confidence. Let's see what Ollie can do to bring it back. And all of a sudden, the energy seems to have died down a little bit there for the Hallam student. Who would you say has taken it so far for you, Dan? Oh, it's close. I, do, I would have Ollie on the scorecard so far. But it's been a very close round. Could be a draw after the last few punches thrown from Will McDermott. The energy has died down and a very good first round once again. So, if I'm not mistaken, this is the last bout before we pass off the commentary to um, our fantastic two other members who will be taking over. Um, I have had a great time, Dan. Great, great time commentating. Me um, too. After this fight, there will be a break. Um, like I've said, where we will pass it over to the presenting team. But before then, we have two more rounds of this fantastic fight. About how, how do you think they've both done? And how can they build off what we've just seen? Well, towards the end of that round, it looked like Will McDermott was crawling his way back into the, the bout, which looked in complete favour of Ollie Creighton for the first minute and a half, I'd say, of that first round. I mean, he was throwing a lot more. Will seemed to stumble on his feet to one, to one of the corners at one point. But we shall see what happens in round two. Anything could happen once again here. Ollie takes his time to get up out of his uh, stool. And round two commences. Great couple of punches thrown there from the Hallam student. 
He was in control in the beginning of round one. Can he do the same in round two? It's a lot of pressure thrown for each fighter there. Some great energy shown there from Oli. Will seems to have done well to protect himself. He has been pushed to the corner though. Oli seems to have the control of this fight. What can Will do, you know, to take to take the edge? Right, it's going to be tough. I think he just needs to get in those slight punches in. He seems to be landing a few to the face of Oli. Is that a bit of blood on Will's nose, do you think, Dan? Well, both faces look red. I'm not sure if any blood's come out yet, but both faces certainly look red. A lot of punches have been thrown. Arms already have started to look quite low down here, not quite blocking the faces. Do you think, you know, tied arms, tied legs will be the determining factor in this bout? Well, fantastic well. combination here from Oli. And the ref calls for the count there. He looks injured here, Will McDermott. He took a lot of body shots there. He took a lot of damage to the sides of his body. And that, that looks to be it for bout number seven, Charlie Fenton. Wow, what an end. That madness from Ollie there. Those combinations on the body with the overhands against Will's head. What a fantastic, fantastic performance from Oli, who has caught, crawled Hallam back with a point. What, what, what will go on now? Maybe, you know, change of pace. Will we see Hallam with a comeback? You know, we still have around six fights to go. Um, what, what will happen? But Dan, for you, how do you think that fight went for Will? Let's start with Will. Well, Will struggled throughout that fight. We will allow the ring announcer to announce Oli Creighton as the winner in round two of this bout. He fought extremely well. You can tell where McDermott is gutted about that round. He went over and punched the blue corner straight away soon as the, the, the fight ended. So here is the ring announcer. I must say at the end there, Oli seemed to almost accept Accept defeat, but you know, that's a gracious, gracious, gracious way to be. Uh, Oli put in a fantastic show. We'll now hand you over to our announcer. Looks like there is an issue with the microphone. Um, both fighters stood there. And there is the winner. The, the arm lifted by the referee. Ollie Creighton. Fantastic. The first win in a while. Sorry about that, Charlie Fenton. That's the okay. first win in a while for Hallam. And he looks very happy about that, that win, doesn't he? That takes it to 5 2 in five. the overall standings. A lot of crawling back to for Hallam to do. Sorry to throw in the Arctic Monkeys lyric there. But. Will put in a fantastic performance. Oli, fantastic performance. Looking back, Teller, fantastic performance. Um, Abdu, fantastic performance. We've seen lots and lots and lots of brilliant boxing today. You guys have been in for a treat. We have been in for a treat. I have enjoyed myself very much, Dan. You, what's your, what's your take on the night? There will now be a short interval of 20 minutes when we will be back with five more bouts. And I would like to remind Alan to buy your varsity tickets. Thank you. Well, there was the ring announcer announcing that there will be a 15 to 20 minute break. And we will shortly hand you back to our presenters to talk about the first we, seven, um, seven fights, seven bouts that have happened so far. The, presenters, the presenter and the two pundits we have for you this evening will take control very soon. But first, Charlie. What an incredible seven round, seven bouts, right? Um, sorry, Dan, were you just able to repeat yourself, sorry. So I was, how good were those seven bouts we've just witnessed? They were fantastic. They were absolutely brilliant. You know, I've really, really enjoyed myself here. Like I said, 
energy, tenacity, respect shown throughout all. Three, three great, great ways to have in that boxing ring. Props to all the fighters, you know, win or loss, come out and it's been an absolute, absolutely fantastic show for their university. Much, much respect for those stepping in that ring, you know, the confidence to do that. You know, the nerves must be absolutely incredible, you know, the adrenaline must be pulsing through their veins. So big, big, big shout. For you though, Dan, who was your favourite fight? Your well, favourite bout? I think I might have to go to bout number three between the ladies there. It was such a good fight we saw in that one. A second round stoppage, the first stoppage of the evening. It was quite unexpected, wasn't it? A nosebleed for Iona, but Dolly Forrester was dominant in that fight. We are, that the last the last bout that we've just witnessed was the first glimpse of dominance we've seen in the bouts so far for Hallam. But I've got to go back to Dolly Forrester once again. The first finish of the evening, she'll be buzzing with that. She'll be buzzing with that. You know, I'm trying to spot her in the arena. She must be over, I can just see her sat at the front of us, Dan, chatting away. She must be absolutely over the moon. I must agree though favorite fight was the two ladies what a fantastic show that was well, fantastic so, show all fights so far have been absolutely incredible haven't they let's hope you know it continues with the final final fights like i've said can hallam bring it back after a fantastic performance from ollie in the maroon just then um but yeah you know absolutely unbelievable we are coming to the end of our time here commentating the Bar City Boxing 2024. We hope those at home are enjoying themselves as much as we have done. Thank you very much. I am now passing you back over to Talia with our pundit and presenter team. That was such exciting fights going on. Anything to say about those? Yeah, I mean, there were one, two, no, I think three stoppages, was it? Can you yeah. remember? There was two, two, I believe. One TKO and one just waved up, it was done. So it was a couple stoppages and a lot of, a lot of split unanimous decisions, a lot of action and especially that last fight, fantastic. Ollie Creighton versus Will Brantford. Absolutely fantastic, and we're looking forward to another five rounds of bouts as well. So we've actually got some of the boxers here um, to talk to us. So here's our first boxer here. Hi, do you want to just introduce yourself to the camera for? Hi, I'm Daniel. Oh, hey, 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 I'm Daniel Son. Hey, nice, nice to meet you. Son. How are you feeling about that fight? Oh yeah, great fight. Me and him came up, shook hands. Me and him, we both had, both had open spars. Both know what it is. But yeah, hats off to him. A great win. So have you fought him before then? Yeah, I fought him in the open spa. We, all, we always have the coaches watching us. Both say we're improving. Fabio deserved it though. He's been pushing and pushing, so fair play to him. There's some really impressive fighting on both sides in that match. How do you feel about your performance? My performance, ah, you know. I can't lie, he runs into you, the lad. He runs in. <laughs> and every time I try and run in, he just, he just clenches. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Like, but, you know, fair play. I think, uh, I, think I did well. The uh, coach has said I put a good performance, you know, so that's at the end of the day, that's all I want, isn't it? So overall, you're quite happy with how you did. Yeah, I mean, I'm still ready to go. Put me back in. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Will we see you back at Varsity next year? Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I'll fail my degree just so I can do it again. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Well, it was so great speaking to you, and good luck for everything in the future. We hope to see you fighting again. All right, cheers. I'll come back for a win. Winning. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Um, we've also got a few more boxers who are going to speak to us today. Um, so we have Dolly from the University of Sheffield um, who won her fight. Do you want to just introduce yourself to the camera? Yeah, hi, I'm Dolly. <laughs> so how are you feeling about your fight? What a brilliant fight to watch. Yeah, I'm feeling really good. Just kind of stunned, but yeah, really <laughs> yeah. gassed. Really happy with your performance? Yeah, like I kind of, I, I would have been intrigued to see what would happen if I'd have gone the whole way, you know, but... Yeah, yeah, it was really impressive. You came in so fast, we were all pretty stunned. <laughs> were you expecting that result? Uh, I wanted to win, yeah, but I, I didn't expect that, no. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to do it again, maybe. Will we see you back at Varsity next year? Yeah, hopefully, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Brilliant, well good luck with all future fights and well done for today. What a really impressive win. Anything for you guys to say? 
Yeah, I was just going to say, how long have you been boxing for? Because I know you're fairly new to the club. but Since September, when I joined uni. Wow, that's really impressive, saying it's such a quick turnaround. Um, do you want to fight maybe in the future, more bouts, or are you done for now? Yeah, I feel like I could fight again. Yeah. Okay. Maybe after you've had a little bit of rest and recovery. Um, <laughs> um, what are you going to do to celebrate? Uh, go to Tiger Works. <laughs> yeah, well, well done, it was such a good fight. You should be so proud. Have a good drink tonight. Yeah, celebrate well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we've also got another one of our Hallam fighters to talk to us today. So if you want to come say hello. Hi, if you could just introduce yourself to everybody at home. Hi, I'm Sam from Sheffield Hallam. <laughs> and how are you feeling about your fight today? Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Obviously, it was quite a, quite a scrap in there. I wasn't, uh, first round was a little bit of a shock. Um, but yeah, I managed to adjust to it a little bit. It's just unfortunately didn't get the decision. But, yeah. And uh, how are you feeling about your performance? Are you happy with how you did? Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's my first bout. Um, so like, I've only picked up boxing quite recently, so I felt like I held my own in there. And then, yeah, I can go again next year and hope for the best. How long have you been boxing for? Uh, since end of October, so about six months, I think it is. Something like that. Six months and straight into varsity, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Well, we hope to see you again next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, well done for today. <laughs> so anything else you guys want to say about those fights? Well, um, we saw a big shock with one of the first round knock knockouts, uh, uh, two rounds, two bouts to go. Um, we've got six more fights, bouts coming up. Um, so who knows which way it could go. Um, Uniov need two more wins to take over the night, but Hallam could bring it uh, back. So, yeah. I was really impressed Our with the first two, Sam and Oli, for coming out Bobby as the first two. As, this is her best. Sam has been boxing for not very long. And to come out to that pressure and put on performance like that has been incredible. But quite frankly, we've seen some fantastic quality tonight. There has been, it's particularly in the last fight, as I mentioned earlier, of Oli Creighton and Will. Really good fight. They've been pretty even matchups, I think, so far as well. And we've even seen a, stu a few stoppages, which you don't like to see, but it is entertaining for this crowd. And they've been going back and forth all night. I've heard shouts of, well, you want a disco or something like that? We like to disco. And then it, you're all you're going quiet over there from Uniov in response. It's been a back and forth affair. Yeah, there's some really good support out there tonight. Um, got one particularly loud uh, audience member over there who's really starting the chance off, which I'm sure the boxers are really appreciating the support um, because it's so nice to feel like you're backed. Um, but yeah, yeah, some pretty good walkout songs as well <laughs> tonight. I'm excited to see what else we've got come in. Um, so we're going to take, oh, we've got one more interview actually. <laughs> um, so this is the Sheffield men's boxing captain. If you want to just introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Zach. Yeah, I've, I've smudged a lot of face paint, so I might look like a <laughs> bit of a knob, but like, sorry, can I say that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. How are you feeling about the fights so far? Uh, I'm feeling good. Like, there's been a, there's been some amazing fights, like well matched as well. Um, some close fights also, but we're, we're looking good so far. Like, we're not trying to get complacent with anything. We've got one more win to draw and then uh, two more wins to uh, win. Uh, but yeah, we're not we're not shutting off or anything, so we're gonna just try and go for the kill, really. So you optimistic for a win for Uni of then? Two times, two <laughs> times, two times. We did it last year. We can do it again. There's no doubt. We've got a load of good fighters coming up, so um, yeah, really excited for it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs> Thanks. So we're gonna take a little break now, um, and the boxing will start again after the interval, and we will see you after all of the fights have finished. That's all from us for now.
Welcome to Forge TV. We're for TV and we're a student working committee that produces lots of content. So our main events are varsity and elections where we do big live streams. But we're definitely trying to push this year for other projects around that. Uh, a lot of our committee have got new ideas, which is really interesting to bring to the table. I want to do international students interviews. So this is something that we can bring, uh, bring it up to the Forge TV meeting or anything that we want to do. What we're trying to work on at the moment is celebrating Sheffield's music scene and we're going to be live streaming local bands and we really want people to get involved. So anything you want to get involved with, anything you want to make, that's what Forge TV is all about. I got involved um, because I saw the Forge TV stall at the activities fair in my first year. I've always been interested in doing media because I did it for A-level, but then I've come to university to do engineering, so I wanted to do some sort of media-based activities. I was originally uh, a radio presenter, still am. Um, I do my own show on Forge Radio, and then someone came along and said, look, we need presenters for the elections coverage, you do politics, come and get involved, so I got involved through that. And then this year I decided to take up a committee role. I wanted to try something completely new that I'd never done before as well as push myself out of my comfort zone and Forge TV was perfect for that. I love TV. I was involved in Forge Radio before this but decided that TV was definitely more for me. I got involved with Forge TV because it was extracurricular activity. I've studied journalism, so this would, I thought would give me a great boost up and it definitely has. So when I was coming to uni, I had done a bit of photography before, but not much media of this sort of thing. So I wanted to try it out and I saw Forge TV online. And I thought it looked interesting, so I thought I'd just go for it. I've become more confident. Just a few months ago, I never could have imagined doing something like this, but here I am. I've improved massively being on Forge TV. Um, when I joined the committee as head of graphics, I didn't really have any experience with Adobe Photoshop. I was making it up as I went along. Through repetition, by practicing a lot, I have become fully confident making graphics, designing logos, doing everything that's required for the role. I wouldn't say I'm really confident in all kind of cameras or anything that are related to TV so far. Still not confident to say that, but I'm really happy because I'm improving every day, every time I'm in Forge TV. So I've learned so much, both technical skills, but also just working with other people. So team working skills, working in these projects as sort of time management organization skills, just been great to be part of a team. But I think generally uh, my on-camera presenting has got better. I had to read from a teleprompter, so I had to be a lot more professional about it. I had to get used to knowing sort of scripts and things, whereas before I've always tended to just waffle on, like a bit like I'm doing now. I think just working as a team, the committee are all great people. And if there's something that you're not very good at, there's definitely someone else who can help you with it. So what's great about Forge TV is you can get involved in front of the camera, behind the camera, whatever you want. So if you're not as comfortable in front of the camera, get involved behind the camera and be equally involved. It's so welcoming both in the committee and outside of the committee because it can be quite intimidating but it's it's so worthwhile because everyone there is willing to teach you what you need to know. I recommend Forge TV to anybody who wants a bit of fun, wants to challenge themselves, wants to be creative. It's a brilliant place to be involved in. There's so many different opportunities, whether it's sport, elections, or any of our many other smaller projects. There's so much to get involved in, and we really do need as many hands on deck as we possibly can get. You don't have to have any experience or any skills, as long as you're passionate about TV. Just do it, <laughs> simple as that, just do it.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are now ready to proceed and carry on with the boxing. So first of all, I'd like to invite to the ringside for bout number eight, in the red corner, Sophie Johnson. Welcome back to what's so far been a really exciting night of boxing. Uh, I'm William Simpson, former professional boxer and coach for both university teams. We're coming back now to our first bout of the night with uh, Sophie Johnson from Hallam, making her way to the ring, former rugby player gone boxer. She's been to the... She's been, she's been with the club a few years now and she's decided to commit to boxing back in February. So it's good to see her making her debut in Varsity tonight. I'm joined here by uh, Charlie. I'll hand you over to him for a second. Hi, everyone. I'm Charlie, and I'm here for my first commentary debut with Force TV. Very exciting. Uh, Holly Stewart will be walking out in a second, so go wait for that. A little bit about my experience with the sport. I've done a little bit of work with the club itself, used to the social media. Uh, done little bits and pieces with Wasman Boxing and Misfits Boxing, so looking forward to see a couple of amateur bouts tonight. Will, um, it's been an exciting night so far, really. I mean, so I think it's 5-1 at the moment to Holly Union Sheffield. Stewart. Holly Stewart's coming out now. A little bit of detail about Holly Stewart. She's currently in the social media sec for the Union Sheffield. Keep talking, keep talking. This has gone dead. Uh, it's her first bout for the club and she's sparred her opponent previously. They've been very, very good spars from what I have seen. And massive shout out to Abby Scrutton who's watching in the crowd tonight. She's watching her best friend fight. It's, it's going to be a mental night. Um, uh, to be honest, this is the second female bout of the night. Second female bout of the night. And so far we've seen some really good boxing from both sides. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what goes on here. Admittedly, this is a bout that I'm not 100% sure about which way it's going to go. Most of the other boxers that are going to be uh, facing each other tonight, I've managed to see quite a bit of them. But I, I'm very excited. Can I just say... Looking very confident getting in the ring there. Uh, Holly Stewart couldn't get her gloves on, getting ready to go. And uh, we've got to say so far, it's been very close. Even though it's a 5 1 lead to Union Sheffield, none of these bouts have been a complete wash up in that. I would say Pat Mullins' fight ended in round one. Very strong start for Union. Yeah, really good performance there by Pat Mullen. Commiserations to his opponent. And you're right, you can never really call it quits. At the end of the day, for every boxer that's getting in there tonight, it's about them and their opponent. They're not thinking about this varsity score. So this can still go the other way. We'll just have to keep track of the score. Holly Stewart getting her headgear on now. Okay. From my experience working with uh, female boxers, this can, be the, uh, this can be the only annoying part of it, is just trying to get the, the hair nets on. Head guards on top of the hair. Well, we've already seen Dolly's head gear come off once tonight, so we're ready to go. Yeah, well, let's hope we don't get a repeat. It's good to see both of them in high spirits, so though. They both look very confident. So, just an update on the score. If Holly Stewart does win this bout, that would mean that the worst case scenario for the Union Sheffield tonight is a draw. If the bout after goes to a win for the Union Sheffield, they've won the entire event, and that's a big point in the varsity. Yep, absolutely. And just like you said, it is close and any bout can go anyway, so uh, we, go. we won't count our chickens mate, before they hatch, gentlemen. but it's looking it's good for, for the Colour University of Sheffield. Three. Interesting tactic Two from the Holland corner there, uh, doing some jumping jacks, fair enough, not how I would go corner. about doing it. To the Sheffield Allen University, Sophie Johnson! Well, if you needed to define confidence, there it is. There it is, jumping round, gloves up, she's and ready for it, to be fair. Let's see how Holly responds. To the University of Sheffield! Holly Stewart! Yes, she is. Keeping Social media nice sec at the Johnson moment. The I, th I, I really think she's ready for this. Obviously, I've got to stay in pass from myself. But I think this bout could go either way. Yeah, we'll find out in the first round. Let's keep a very close eye on this because we've got two girls both ready to go. I'm really looking forward to it. Let's see what happens. Holly back into a corner. And we're off. Here we go, second half of the night, off we go. Lead with a jab there, Holly, beautiful connection so far. Just so missing that hook. Yep. 
So this is a good start there from Holly, keeping it on the end of the jab, using the footwork. It looks like Sophie's wanting to close the gap and let the hands go a little bit, but as long as, Soph uh, as, long as Holly keeps it on the end of that jab, she should be safe. Keeping that distance though, it's got to be said, this is Holly's first bout for the university. Um, only been boxing this year, again, sparred her opponent before, but looking at it so far, it, it goes either way. Yeah, well, from what I can see, Holly's doing a great job of keeping it on the end of the jab. She's scoring the punches. It's a few times where Sophie's getting through, but the numbers are in Holly's favour and she's keeping that range, which is really important. Now you see this part here, keeping it nice and long. When Sophie comes in, she wants to smother that work, get out of there again, get back onto her range, Sophie's and she's doing, doing it really well. Work, but I'd say with the hook so far, whereas Holly, again, with that jab and that backhand, yeah. going again. Yeah. Now that, just there, with, uh, with Sophie, you've got to be very careful of that. That overhand right, if she starts to find it, could be a bit of trouble for Holly, but so far, if she keeps on that range, she should be okay. The uni crowd getting behind Holly here, chanting her name. Yeah. Back on that jab but again, does receive a backhand. Mm. Backhand again, jab, and now she's, she's, she's giving back, she's giving back. That's it. What Sophie wants to be doing here, she wants to be taking a little step to the left here, she wants to try and cut that ring off, because every time that she comes in, Holly's getting a few punches off and moving to the side. Still some good work by her, but she needs to close that gap and keep Holly in one place so she can let her hands go. I think she's doing very well at keeping her distance, stepping in with a jab, because there's been no easy hits here. Yeah. Oh, oh there we go. Sophie, good land there from Holly. So if you looked away from her there, she's got to tighten that guard up, but got to start using that parry when the jab's coming out. She's not being able to close the distance so far. This is a bit better. Good, letting the hands go. She wants to keep her on the rope. So do you see that little step to the side that she used to get away? That's a 10 second knock there. Holly coming back in with them shots. Very good Very work. good, very good work. Very good, just needs to get that guard up now. Sophie coming back in, and there's a bell, round one. Now that is how you end the round from both of them. Really good work. I thought Holly was going to get a standing eight count there, but Sophie dug her heels in, she fought back, and now we're getting ready for round two. Really good work from both of them. If I was in Sophie's corner right now, I'd be telling her to, to tighten up that right hand. She needs to start parrying that jab, and she's got to stop giving Holly these escape routes. She's got to cut off that ring. Holly's focusing a little bit more on the breathing there, T taking, taking a word there. Absolutely, you've got Coach Alex in the corner. He's probably working on keeping her calm because right now the boxing's working for her, but she's got to keep on top of that boxing. Sophie's going to come for it this round. She needs this round if she wants to stay in the bout. So Holly has to maintain calmness. And can we just say what an amazing job that Chef City have done tonight, getting these bouts in order. I think we've got 12 bouts all in all tonight. And so far they've been very close, they've been very fair bouts. Again, it's, it's anyone's game to lose. Absolutely, there's been a few bouts going one way or the other, there's been a few very close ones, but yeah, so far, Hallam and Uniov doing a really good job putting a show on. Both corners stacking back up for round two. Okay, let's see how they uh, adjust to the first round. So, Sophie, ah, okay, so Sophie's started to use a double jab, but she needs to work off that parry, she needs to knock away that jab of Holly Holly's, so she can get in. Holly's doing a very good job at fighting at the moment, keeping yeah. that backhand ready to just launch. That little flinch of the left hand, it just triggers her, so when she thinks she's guarded it, she can step in, and there we go again, that lovely little faint then jab. Crowd's getting behind them both again, hearing a lot more Uding and Hallam at the moment, not to throw digs at Hallam, being very impartial at the moment. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, if it were a cheering contest, then maybe Uni would be winning right now. But, you know, it's a boxing match. So, <laughs> we'll let the boxers Sophie get on with it. that backhand there. Holly just taking her time. Yeah, and to be fair, that's all she needs to do right now. She's found the range and she's winning off of the jab. Hot Sophie needs to step forward. She needs to let the hands go a bit more. She's got to take this boxing away from Holly. These are two opponents that have faced each other before. We know, we know how they fight and yeah. they're doing a very good job at pacing themselves. Holly coming back in there with a jab. Yeah, and we just saw an overhand right land there for Sophie, which was a really good one, but she needs to build up on, the, on that now. She stood in the centre of the ring and it's allowing Holly to maintain that range. She needs to take little inches forward. She's got to back Holly up into the ropes so she can let her hands go. That was a great one-two there from Holly. And again... There we go, there's the overhand right. Sophie, though. So... Again, Holly keeping really good range. Sophie's finding the odd punch, but the thing is now, she's starting to slow a little bit as well. She needs to cut off that ring so that she's not having to chase. Both opponents are pacing themselves. We're about halfway through round two at the moment. So, let's see here. Needs to tighten that guard That's up. That's a good combination there from Holly. Very good work from Holly. Very good use of the straight shots. Oh, very good. If this continues to land, she might even get her onto a standing eight count. We'll just have to keep a close eye on it. That's a 10 second knock there. Holly throwing out that fate again, going in with the backhand, missing. Sophie throwing back with a hook. Not landing at the moment. Lands beautifully with a backhand. That's the end of round two. Again, Will, what again, do you think? Again, strong finish from both boxers. I believe, I think Holly's got both rounds so far. 
Sophie needs something big if she wants to win this. I reckon she's got to try and go for a stoppage. The only way she's going to find that is if she cuts off that ring and finds the overhand right. There's only so much that a coach can do for the boxer in that one minute interval. So hopefully Sophie listens, realises what she's got to do and she's going to step on the gas now for this last round. Holly keeps on the end of that jab, keeps it at range. She's going to cruise to a unanimous win. Both corners are taking the time now. Both opponents sat down. Waiting, getting the water in. About to go to round three. Tom Skinsley and Megan waving into the press box at the moment, getting ready for the start of round three. Okay. Here we go, both points up. This goes either way, it's a very exciting last round. Holly looks ready, Sophie looks ready, here we go. And that's the bell. And that's the bell, let's see if the adjustments have been made. It's going to have to be a hard round for Sophie, Sophie if she wants to get the there, points back. Taking a lot of hits there from Holly. Sophie that. backed into the corner, Sophie taking the middle of the ring. Holly's found the range, she's keeping it long. This is really good work, keeping nice footwork. Distance. Circling around, taking back the centre of the ring. That's how you want to win this match. Sophie stepping in there with a backhand, very nice. Good Holly use again, straight shots. I think we have to appreciate yeah. that both opponents have a very good with a very good grasp on the, on the straight shots. Not being very hooks thrown, but if your fundamentals are there, you don't really need them. Yeah, I think the difference maker here is the tactics. And one big issue I'm seeing here is that for Sophie in the Hallam corner, the guard is just too wide. And the th Sophie losing the footwork there. That's good. Coming straight back in. Good coming forward, but again, look at that space to the side. Every time she comes forward, Holly's able to escape just by circling off to her right. Both points are slowing down over here, but stepping back up. That was a very good bit of work. Very nice, but a little bit of footwork there. Okay. Sophie's in a good position now. She doesn't need to come forward. She doesn't need to try too hard here. She needs to stay focused and keep on the end of that jab. Sophie needs to step forward. Did I say Sophie twice? I think you said Sophie twice. But we'll Holly, roll it anyway. We're going to roll Holly's it anyway. doing great. She's on the range. She's doing really well. Sophie needs to step forward. She needs to start putting these it's hands got to be together. Said, every time that Holly throws, she's just taking that jab back. It's, it's very close. Some good boxing from Holly to finish this round. Unfortunately, there might not be too much left in the tank for Sophie, but you can't knock the heart. She is coming forward every single time and she is throwing. She's trying her best. Something down over there, landing that jab. Both points coming in close there. Both taking very good hits there. Sophie taking control of the middle ring. Holly responding. Again, that right. At, this is the last 10 seconds. You're going to see it again. We're They've done it, it every now. round so it's far. Out. The nice boxer heart. From Holly. Let's Sophie go. throwing back the counter, just missing. Brilliant bout round. from Beautiful. both of them. Brilliant Amazing. bout. Quality boxing from Holly Stewart. Brilliant heart shown from Sophie Johnson. Only difference was those use of the straight shots and the ring, the ring craft keeping herself away from danger and moving back into the centre. In my opinion, I think Holly may have taken all three rounds there. Sophie, really good effort. Wants to go back to the drawing board, start working on her cutting off of the ring so that she can, next time she's got an opponent like that, can keep them trapped on the ropes and let those hands go. I think for me, the fundamentals there were brilliant. The footwork was very good and the jabs, Holly consistently on the jab, amazing work. And Sophie as well, throwing them one-two combinations. Mm -hmm. For me, I mean, who, who do you think takes this? Well, like I say, I see boxing and I see that Holly's box a really good match. I think that's going to go unanimous to the Uni of Sheffield for this one. We're going to the referee. Joe, winner, ladies and gentlemen, bout number eight with a unanimous points decision in the blue corner. Yeah, so that's a Holly Stewart win there. Yeah. Uni crowd going mental. Yeah. No discredit to Sophie Johnson, though. What a tremendous Brilliant effort. Foul. And the times that she was able to let those hands go, it showed. She was, she was always in that match. It was just unfortunate the boxing was working better in Holly's favour. Abby Scott are going mental down there. So now, officially, according to the, the, obviously the previous bouts, the worst-case scenario for Uni of tonight is a draw. If Uni of Sheffield win one more bout tonight, they take the varsity point. Absolutely. The varsity point most likely going towards Uni of at the moment. And like we said before, for the boxers, it's a, it's all about their match, so they're not going to be thinking about that going in there. They're going to be all eyes focused on it their opponent. It should be said, a similar event occurred last year. Union Sheffield ran away with it towards the start, but after the interval, there was a lot of howling pressure and there was a lot of howling wins. It did come down to that last fight. It did, and that was a really exciting night, and hopefully we're going to get a replica of that tonight. What's really good to see is, though, that 
every box that no matter which one's gone in, whether they've won, lost or draw, they've come out, big smile on their face, they're proud of what they've achieved tonight and rightfully so, there's a thousand people in here I think, it's a crazy atmosphere. So for you guys watching at home, um, Sophie, it's, it's just a brilliant night, Sophie. Unfortunately, unfortunately if you couldn't make it, um, try to get down next year, it's, it's, just, it's a brilliant night. It is, it is. Corners seem ready for the next bout. Let's have a look at who we've got to come up next. I'd like to invite to the ringside for bout number nine in the red corner, Jacob Little McCarthy. Okay. Next up, we've got for Hallam, we've got Jacob entering the ring. So, Jakob, not boxed on Bar City before, no official amateur bouts. He has worked with Sheffield City for a couple of years now, and he has performed in one of the sparring days. His style tends to be quite tenacious coming forward. He's a very aggressive boxer. What might be an issue for him is he tends to get outboxed until he finds those big hands to land. So we'll have to see how he's improved and developed himself going into this bout. We've got... So. And his okay. opponent in the blue corner, Oliver Scuffin. Oliver Scuffin coming out now. Health and safety. For, for the uni of Sheffield, he's brilliant. And can I just add, this man's playlist on the Monday sessions might be questionable, but his boxing technique is brilliant. He's an unreal fighter. He deserves to be on this card. No, having, uh, having worked with both of them at the boxing club, I think this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Boxing skill-wise, I think he's going to go over to university again, but going over to the Hallam side, there's definitely a power advantage and there's a very tenacious boxer waiting in that red corner. I think it's going to be a very close one, this. So after watching Ollie a lot of, a lot of sparring days, he's a tricky southpaw. It's going to be a very difficult fight for his opponent if he can't get a hang of that. But both of these guys, they've earned their way onto varsity. Again, it's another one of these bouts that you, you can't write off straight away. Absolutely, and it's that classic southpaw versus orthodox paradigm. What's really good about it is, for Ollie as an advantage, he's got that southpaw stance, but he's also the taller, rangier fighter, so Jakob's going to have to get past that lead foot before he can start trying to land his punches. However, Jakob himself, very, very fast at stepping in, and when I, like I say, when he gets in there, he throws with power. So it's all about if Ollie can keep him on the end of them shots, and if Jakob can get in there to land those big hits. Both looking very confident. Number nine, it's ladies and gentlemen, is another They're contest here. consisting of three two-minute rounds. And look at that. Introducing in the red corner, representing the Sheffield Alum Uni. Both keeping calm, both are ready Jacob to go. Jacob Leno McCarthy. He's a showman. We've got two showmen in the ring, and that's what you want to see. Yeah. Both these guys. And his opponent in the blue corner. the universities at the same time. Representing the University of Sheffield. They both know ahead of them, but they're still here for a good Oliver night. Scotland. Again, if it was a cheering contest, <laughs> you never really know, but it's a boxing match, and we're about to see some really good boxing here, I think. So if you're just joining us, if Uni take this win, varsity-wise, it's over. However, obviously, we've got three more bouts after this. Could go either way for the wins. Absolutely, there's still a potential for a draw for Hallam, but so far, University have put in the graph tonight. And here goes Ollie Scuffin, strong start there, jumping straight into the middle of the ring. So, like I said, Jakob very fast, very powerful, and he wants to go in there and be hard and strong. Ollie what wants to keep it on range, there. and he wants to get out of there. He needs to get he off them to ropes. Get out of there. So taking control there of the we go, Ollie walking onto that, that. Brilliant, walking onto that southpaw backhand there. He needs to keep it long, and he doesn't need to get involved with Jakob, because that's where Jakob wants him. Ollie taking a few hits there, hair going a little bit all over the place. Oh, very nice jab there. Very, very good southpaw backhand, really good indeed. So, immediately, what you're seeing there, Jakob, hands down, very big swings. The ones that land, they look damaging. Oli managed to get off the ropes eventually, but he doesn't want to stay there. That's where the bout wants to be for Jakob. Oli needs to keep this at range. He needs to do what Holly did in that first bout and circle off every time and maintain the centre of that ring. Once his hair's done. <laughs> Once his hair's done. He's got a lot of hair. You think he would have like, just cut it off? <laughs> for the fight. I know Jack Whiteman did. Do anyway. a Britney Spears, but yeah. <laughs> Here we go, go, straight back in. Shots comes in the middle. Oh, Good use of the backhand again. So, oh, a little bit of a trip now there. this is a that South Pole Orthodox paradigm. It's difficult for Jakob. But again, he's got the power and he's got the strength. He's a very tenacious boxer. Once he gets Ollie on them ropes, he will not stop. He will relent until he gets what he's after. There's a lot of stamina in that ring. A lot of testosterone too. <laughs> So, Ollie calming down a bit control. now. They've had a bit of an edgy start. Good backhand again from Ollie. So far, I would say Ollie's winning it off boxing, 
but it's still a very close round. If Jakob's able to pin him down and throw a few more shots. Very nice. Now he's walked there. onto that back end again. And again. Walked onto another. Again, he's dropped his hand oh, there. Oh, it's he's going to get a count. Shot. He's going to get a count in a moment it's if he coming. walks onto one more. Yep, oh, count, here we go. That count. I think Only that should have been a bit sooner there, from the referee there. He's himself a little bit. So he needs brilliant to brilliant so far. He's sat there. Yeah. He needs to not get carried away though because Crew he walks onto one. back in, he's going for it. Good Glad boxing from Oli, keep that guard box, tight. Because Jakob knows he's got to go for it now. Good, good, head, good movement. head movement. Brilliant head movement. Yeah, brilliant head movement. It's a shame he didn't come off with a counter though. He needs to come back with something now. He needs to give Oli something to think about. Glad and he needs to get there. that right hand up. He's taking the left backhand every time from Oli. Oli controlling the centre of the ring at the moment. Backing off a little bit. Last 10 seconds. Is he going to put another burst in? Let's see. Oli taking control once again. And that's the bell. So. Good round. Really good round. Some smooth uh, head movement there from Jakob. What you tended to see there was he put everything into every shot. And once he'd thrown them all, he didn't really have a lot left in the tank. So the first minute is when he's dangerous. But that second minute, as you saw there, Ollie's able to land the backhand. He's able to use his boxing. And it resulted in a standing eight count. So right now, Ollie's just got to stick to what he's doing, I think. Jakob needs to get him on the ropes. He needs to get that right hand up as well because the southpaw backhand is dangerous. And it's caught him a few times so far. You got any input on this, Charlie? I'd say at the moment, again, both both fighters going in there, giving it their all. But Oli, being a southpaw, for me personally, I can't stand fighting southpaws. <laughs> so I don't know how Jack will be taking it at the moment. No, but he's got a lot of experience, so maybe, I don't know, Will? I mean, as an orthodox boxer myself, I had nightmares boxing against southpaws, but you always find it's a way. Unnatural. It's Jacob. unnatural. Jakob wants to get that left foot on the outside of Oli's stance and he wants to fire the backhand down the middle. He needs to land a decent shot now to slow Oli down. very cool headed in there at the moment. Going in with that backhand. And that's exactly what he wants to be. If he gets too carried away, he's going to walk into Jakob's range and that's where it's dangerous. Jakob knows Good that he needs to land there, though, from Jacob. Brilliant oh, boxing. Straight back in, landed some brilliant shots. He's in a bit too close though. If he gets caught by one of those right hands, the tides can turn very quickly. Oh, very nice. And there's another count from Oli. Very cool, very collected, not a care in the world. Again, Look and that go. resulted from really good boxing. Jakob needs to get the hands up because if he walks in there again without putting them up, he's going to get another standard eight count. It's probably going to win the bout. There we go. Coming straight back in. Again, Oli needs to get out of there. Shots. Oli landed some brilliant hooks there, though. So, Jakob Just needs to tighten now. that guard up. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Referee's going to have to call a stop to this, I reckon. Referee's too, too many clean shots. Another hook lands, this might be it. Again, really it's nice head movement, cool. but there's nothing on the end of it. He wants to be getting a little counter on the end. So let's see what the referee's stopped this for. Oli sorting his hair out once again. When you watch his back, mate. calling the doctor up. I didn't really get a good it's close look there, but I think Jakob's nose might be bleeding. Doctor's coming to check him now. He's coming to clean his nose. He's got a bit of a toilet roll. Oli doing see. all the right things, stood in his corner, taking some deep breaths and keeping calm. For Jakob now, he needs to step in and he needs to go hard. Credit to both fighters though. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Neither of them are backing down. Uh, again, the backhand, he's got to get the guard but up. He's responding. Uh, it's another lovely shot. He's keeping his guard up. He's just responding. This is good stuff. He's really a good shots being, show, uh, being thrown from Scuffham here. Great stuff from Scuffham again. He needs to keep that guard up. I think a few more of them backhands, he might get the final standing eight count here, but Jakob's start, finally starting to put that guard up. He wants to use a parry on that backhand. Scuffum's looking very comfortable and very confident in the middle of that ring. Yeah, Jakob needs to take a breathe. He needs to take a breathe. He's, unfortunately, he's lost this round as well, I believe. He's going to have to get some energy together because the one thing about him is he's always dangerous. He's always got that power, but he needs to find a way to land it on Oli if he wants to turn the tide. Oli, again, taking control of the centre of the ring. Jack of a lovely bit of head movement there. Throwing his jab out. Another 10 seconds to end. To landing. That's the final 10 seconds. Seems like his hands have dropped. Oli letting him off a little bit there. End of round. Okay, two good rounds for Uniov. Again, Jakob not out of this match, but he needs to find a way to land on Oli and he needs to keep that guard up because the boxing from Oli Scruffham here is just brilliant. He keeps landing yeah. that southpaw backhand and he's able to spin off, keep the centre of the ring. 
I'm really happy with the way he's performing. How it's about something, you? It's something about these southpaws. This, uh, honestly, <laughs> it's, it's, it's brilliant boxing. It's it, a, it really is. It's the classic southpaw jinx, I guess. <laughs> but, like I say, the bout isn't over yet. No. And as we know, Hallam has got a lot of power in that corner. If he finds a way to cut off that ring and start letting it go, the tides can turn. All he needs to stay switched on for Both this last round. looking just really composed. Mm. Ollie getting a wipe down there. Interesting choice of music for the uh, interval. We're going to sack the DJ after this. <laughs> Both fighters back in the feed. Okay, final round. It's been a great bout so far. Let's see some more fireworks from these lads. All he needs to look to take control of the centre of the ring, and that's what he's done. He's walking straight into it. Touch gloves, and off we go. That's it, keeping it long. Jakob wants to keep... Oh, that's Again, a he drops the hand. There. He drops that hand, and then he walks onto the backhand every time. He needs to keep it up until he's got Ollie on oh, the ropes. He's, connect, he's connected through. There the we go. There. Get him down. He's got to step forward and push him back to the ropes. And again, just like with Holly Stewart versus Sophie Johnson, Ollie's managed to escape to the side. He's back in the centre of the ring. Now he's able to use his range. A little bit of a clinch there. Quality work. Quality work from Ollie. Some really tenacious work from Jakob too. He's just got to keep that guard up. He's got to find his moment. Okay, a bit of a standing eight count there. Admittedly, Jakob's been taking a few big shots, so they have accumulated. The referee has made a good decision there. And that's the bout. So, worst case scenario for Uni now is a draw. That is, yeah, that's correct. Worst case scenario is a draw. What I say, for me personally, Ollie's done an in amazing fact, show there. Called off in the third round, amazing, unreal. In fact, are we right there? Weren't we 5-1? Wasn't Uni of 5-1 going into uh, this part? I do believe. Holly Stewart's won, that was 6-1. And uh, Holly Scruffin may have just won Varsity for Uni of. I think <laughs> from the looks of the committee section over there, it does look like he might have just won Varsity. Yeah, I they can't really tell at the moment. No, no, yeah. they, don't, they don't look too happy, do they? Can, 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 can we receive a confirmation on that? Someone? The referee stop the contest in favour of... 7-2, 7-2, so they've won Varsity. Yeah. University of Sheffield wins Varsity this year. There you go, Ollie Scuffin, look at that smile, he knows, he knows what he's just done. He'll be getting a few five pound rounds in later at Tiger Works. Yeah, no, Absolutely. Really solid performance by Jakob. Really tenacious, honestly. Not once could he be put down. And he walked onto some big shots. He wanted to keep that guard up. But he kept coming forward and he never stopped. And the ones he was landing, you could tell that Ollie respected the fact that he was in danger if he didn't get him out of there. He has done brilliantly. He's done his uni proud, he's his friends proud. Proud and he's done his family proud. An amazing fighter. Mm -hmm. I hope to see him back again next year. Absolutely. Okay, so moving on to the next bout. So we'll, let's have a look at who we've got coming up next. We've got uh, Esteban Benitez versus James Cole. Okay. Esteban Guzman Benitez. My mistake. Apologies. So. What a celebration is going on down there. We're very happy. That's, that's two years in a row that Uni have taken this event. Absolutely. And to think that last year they were uh, shouting up about breaking the Hallam streak. It looks like Uni started their own. A couple of the previous fighters there. A few pints around. I've seen Pat Mullen there with a pint. Well deserved, to be fair. It was a brilliant fight ended in the first round. Yeah, well... Like we said, all the boxers seem very happy with themselves. At the end of the day, just stepping into the ring at this varsity atmosphere, you never forget it. Win, lose or draw, you've done something amazing just stepping through those ropes. Well, for the boxers at the gym, varsity for some of them, this is the end all and be all of their boxing careers at university. Absolutely. It's a brilliant opportunity to showcase some skills in front of the friends and the family. And I think every fighter I've seen so far has done themselves proud. Yeah, no, that's completely correct. And you're right, it is the be-all and end-all. For the majority of people that come onto this show, it's the only time they'll ever box, really. And the amount of effort that they put into it, alongside their university degree, don't forget, it's amazing. And what's been really nice to see is that for the last two years, we've managed to fit on two female bouts. And I know that at the University of Sheffield, there's a queue of female boxers waiting to get into there. Hopefully, Hallam picks it up as well next year, and we can see a few more female bouts on the card, because they have shown some true quality. Well, we can tell from standing here in the commentary booth, this crowd loves the female bouts. These female bouts are getting larger, if not 
bigger reactions than the male bouts because they're putting in such a shift in the ring. Absolutely. And for me personally, I, 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 you got to love them getting in the ring. It's, a pretty, it's brilliant. It's just brilliant night for everyone involved. We're gassed to be here. It's a good night. It's quality. It's quality. Absolutely. They seem to be taking a little breather here. I'm assuming whoever was coming in next, they might not have been quite warmed up. So... Corners seem ready. Something is being said in the corners. We don't know what. The next bout will be Esteban, representing the University of Sheffield, and James representing Hallam. Yes. Anything you want to say about that bout before you get in the ring? So, Esteban, he boxed a very long time ago from what I know, and he's put a lot of graft into getting ready for this bout. So I've got here, because he's his first fight was six years ago. Six years ago. Mm -hmm. He's trained unbelievably well. And this bout is to honour his mother, who is currently sick back home oh, in his well. home country of Ecuador. So, again, another amazing fighter. Doing it for an amazing reason. So, for me personally, I hope everything goes well back home for you. But tonight, get in the ring. Make us proud. That's what yeah. we want. And more importantly, make themselves proud. They've got to go in there and they've got to enjoy it. Win, lose or draw. And, and then... For James, he's a physiotherapy student at Sheffield Hallam with two years boxing experience. Unfortunately, he did lose his box bout in the quarterfinals. Again, that box experience, it just it flows over into varsity. Very, very similar competitions in terms of the rules, in terms of the training. Um, for you, compare varsity to box. So, varsity, like you say, for a lot of people, this is the first time they tend to get in the ring, and it's probably the last time. It's a good chance for both universities to showcase the effort that they're putting and let first bouters have a go in front of a massive crowd. Books as a tournament tend to be a lot more serious. That's where people have been training for it all year. You have serious, committed boxers wanting to make their name and win a national title. It's three, bo three bouts over three days. It's very intense. And, yeah, people that commit to that, they tend to be very switched on with their boxing. I, I may just add, it's a while away, isn't it? It's 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 Portsmouth. It, it, well, these these boxers are going out to Port, uh, Portsmouth to box. So, I mean, at least they're committed because I wouldn't want to be in Portsmouth. Yeah, well, neither. Yeah, no, you're right. Don't want to. No offense, you hate when watching for Portsmouth, but like, yeah. I, I just wouldn't want to yeah. go. Well, for box organisers who are listening to this, <laughs> please try and get the way in sorted out play, because. Play in Manchester, please. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, my days, yeah. The organisation for the weigh ins, it sometimes takes four hours to get all of the boxers weighed in can be a bit of a crazy one down there. But at the same time, amateur boxing, it's an amateur sport. It's a grassroots sport. It's run by volunteers. And the people that put the time in, we should be very respectful and very grateful to them. Just like the boxing club that is training both universities tonight and helping them get involved with an amazing event. So it should be noted as well that both sets of fighters are fighting out of the same gym. So these guys know each other. So Thank maybe you, there might be a little gentlemen. bit personal there when it comes I'd to like the universities. To invite to the but there's a lot of respect the Absolutely. I'm told they're friends in all fairness. James I mean, I don't know this for certain. Keep going. Okay. okay, yeah, cool. Okay, so got uh, got James Cole entering the ring. Very lovely ch song. <laughs> very lovely choice of song. He looks very happy to be there. I think so he's just gassed to be here. We're gassed to be here. The crowd's gassed to be here. It's a lovely night. It's a lovely song choice. It really is. And a bit more about James as a boxer. He tends to have a very closed off style. From the times that I've seen from him, he tends to wait for his moment. He tends to shell up in that guard and let the opponent throw the first few shots. But when he lets it go, he is very cold. He comes out very calculated and he's very accurate with his shots. The only issue with that is, if you stand still in front of someone who knows what and they're doing, they might land them the shots and then get out of the way. Esteban Guzman Benitez. Here he is, Esteban representing the University of Sheffield here. What a composure. Big smile on his face as well. He, he, again, just gassed to be here. Absolutely, like we've been saying. It's an amazing event. I'd, I'd argue the best amateur boxing event in England. Even the national championship finals do not draw a crowd or get an event going just like this. Again, he's been, he's been boxing for all of six years now. He's got it about him. He's got the experience and he will definitely have that composure. So, for James, how does he get in here? So, for James, he needs to build up on the things that have cost him when he went to books. It's that closed off style. It's good for him when he's able to pin an opponent and let his hands go, but he needs to mix something in with that. If he stays stationary, Esteban's just going to come in, he's going to land his combination, he's going to step away before James can land. He needs something behind it. He needs to start setting up with his jab. 
We'll have to do some training with Esteban. It's got to be said, he's very tricky. He's got a, he's got a very good technique and he's fast. So, ref looking at both fighters here now. Esteban's good to well, go. Bounce on the spot. He he he's contest. been here before. He's here he knows the score. James is getting himself signed up too. He looks ready as well. Corner. He's very confident to the Sheffield yeah. LMU. Oh, wow. Shake Look at that. Ball. Little shake off. James looks more like he's just trying to keep it all and inside. He's ready to, to go. Corner. He wants to keep to all of his energy for the bout. Esteban goes man beaten. Calling the referee to the blue yard. Referee, Mr. Harry Conlon. Both fighters meeting in the middle of the ring. So, as with most bouts, this first round will be the telling one. We're going to see. Is the experience of Esteban going to be a bit much for James, or has James made the improvements and adjustments necessary to perfect his boxing style a bit more? Esteban taking the middle of the ring very fast there. Mm. What's really good to see is James starting off with more of a looser guard and using the jab. His Esteban. chin's a bit high in the air for my liking. Esteban coming in that one two there. Mm. But he's keeping calm and composed. Esteban's using a lot of energy. He's bouncing, he's jumping in with shots. He's landing. Just connect with that backhand though. That yeah. backhand could be yeah. very dangerous for James. He lands once again. Yeah. Come in with a good hook. What James is doing, which is something that we've yet to see from some of the other boxers that have fallen short, is he comes forward calmly and he uses that jab. So even if Esteban's landing, he's letting Esteban use that energy and he's staying in the bout. You, you, e you've, got to, you've got to credit Esteban here. He's coming in, he's landed some very good hooks here. And once again, yeah, again, I really good shots. He's showing so far in round one. It is, but look at that calmness on James. He's coming forward, he's creeping in and still firing out that jab. He's happy to lose his first 30, 40 seconds, but he's from well, the moment Esteban slows down, I think we're going to see the hands start flowing a bit more. Yeah, James but really taking his time here in the first round. Esteban bouncing round again. That's yeah, a lot of yeah, energy yeah. used to start off with in the yeah. first 30 seconds. Absolutely, and like I say, from what I've seen of James, this is the thing he needs to work on. He waits a bit too long. If he lets the hands go just a tiny bit more, like doubling up that jab while he's trying to close and down the distance. Is. And again, good work there from Esteban. James needs to start letting the hands go a bit more. But again, good round from Esteban. Guard's a bit low. He doesn't want to walk on to anything. There are some good fates here from Esteban, but James again blocking. Doesn't seem that fair. There we the go. He's there we back. go. Again, that's two backhands in a row there from James. So, again, like you see, that cool, calm, calculated composure from James. The moment he saw the opening, he let the hands go. And notice that bounciness from Esteban and that calmness from James. The amount of energy that's been expended this round, a lot more on Esteban's side. I'd argue he's won the round but he's got to be careful. He doesn't want to gas out in the middle of the second round. Uh, it's very interesting first round there because James didn't seem that fuss when the shots were connected, but it's been a lot of energy from Esteban to start off with. Yeah. Both fighters in the corner. Yeah. So I was getting a little yeah. bit of advice there. So in the red corner, I can already see that he's getting a bit of a telling. He's saying you need to throw more. Okay, you need to start doubling up that jab. And when you let the hands go, let him know. Let let more of it in there. You've got to get him on them ropes and throw the hands a bit more. Esteban, really good boxing that round. I imagine what he's being told to do is just calm down a little bit because he is, I can so see him lot, bouncing. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of energy. A few guys watching at home, six minutes in that ring might not seem like a long time, but trust me, when it's you're in there eternity. jumping round, blocking the punches, throwing the punches, it takes a lot. It's, it's very, it's very tolling. It is an absolute eternity. Just one minute going in that ring feels like you've been there an hour. Again, it, just credit to both fighters. Absolutely. James coming in very confident there, same as Esteban backing up. Let's see what adjustments have again. been made. Esteban jumping back in again, but James throwing that backhand, and again. And again, so James has made the adjustments. He's listened to his coach, which is really good. The chin's still really high, though, and you just saw that there. He walked onto a left hook by Esteban. Esteban's keeping the energy flowing, but again, all this bouncing. I can see him slowing down towards the end of this round if he's not careful. There's some great blocks there, though, from Esteban. It's, it's, it's very good head yeah. for it. He's working yeah. that body as yeah. well. But James, again, doesn't seem that phased. No, again, that calmness, it allows him to just take a, pace himself. Take a jab there, though, and Ooh, the Good backhand from Esteban. And good and left and hook. hook. He needs to tuck that chin in a bit more. But he's, he's throwing back, getting that jab yeah. out. Yeah. And again, these cool, calculated shots here from James. He's landing really well. Oh, He's that's very a good accurate. Good backhand from Esteban there to respond. Good. Uh, yep. Very good work from Esteban. So again, now you're starting to see it a little bit. He's starting to get a bit tired. You can see the hands starting to sag a bit. He wants to shake them down, get that lactic acid out, and he wants to just calm down a bit, get onto his jab. This has been a great show for both boxers. 
Absolutely brilliant oh, bounce. That's a lovely uh, one-two combination there from Esteban. James throwing back with that backhand, absolutely. knocking him back, and now they're clinching almost with that uppercut, oh. and Esteban's down. Okay, good Esteban work. will be receiving a the count there. Will, what happened? Looks like he walked onto the jab. I'd argue maybe he slipped as he walked onto the jab, but if you go down as a result of a punch, it is a knockdown. There's nothing you can do about that. Knock he had to get counted. Is where it is, and we're back again. Good Here respect we go. from Esteban James. taking the middle of the ring. He's waiting for James to throw. He's looking at that count. He lands with a jab. Good Great shot from there. Esteban. Now Great this response is from James. And again, that backhand from James and a jab. Right, now this is where Esteban needs to calm down because he's getting a bit carried away. He's gone down. The adrenaline's pumping count. and he's thinking that he has to get back in there. He needs to calm down, okay? He's won the first round. He's just got to concede that James is doing better this round. He needs to calm James down. James is looking very composed at the moment as he gets back in. That's another Good for Esteban, there. but he needs to just chill a little bit. Esteban responding. James landing, though. And that's a bell. What a round. Very what good round. What a round that has been. So I would argue that's probably one of the better rounds of the night. Yeah, definitely. Have gone either way. If you had gone into that round, I wouldn't think that S-Bound would have been counted twice. No. And this is a brilliant story of a boxing match. Just in a three-round bout, you've got that first round there. s came out brilliantly. He's thrown loads of punches, scored a lot of shots. James was a bit too close off, just a bit too patient. He lost that first round. He's been given some instructions. He's come out the second round. He's made the necessary adjustments. And it's resulted in a standing eight count and a knockdown. It's really good for him. Esteban needs to listen to his coach now. He needs to calm down. It's an emotional time for him. He has to go out there and stick to the boxing that won him that first round and not get carried away. I think we're going to see now Esteban needs to let that experience show. Again, four extra years on your opponent. You can use that to your advantage. But we're going to see how does he start off this next round. Absolutely. And always remember, this is boxing. One punch can change it all. What a sport. What a sport. What a sport. Here we go, again. final round. Looking very confident, James bouncing round. <laughs> it's an unreal bout so Let's far. Let's see what we get. S taking the middle of the ring, getting in with that one-two. That's two. it, and he wants to hold the middle of the ring, not get carried away. Good stop back there by James. Good, good stuff from Esteban. He's landing, but he's keeping the guard down. James is giving him some punishment here. He's not out. No, he no. wants this bout. So this is getting a bit messy now, and this could result in a knockdown for either of them. But the thing is, this is where James likes to be. He's a very good fighter on the inside. He's very good at picking his punches. James, James has just landed some very good backhands there. He, he has done. And that first five seconds from Esteban was really good. He held the centre of the ring, but he got carried away. He's got to calm Lovely down. That backhand from Esteban. Again, again, that experience, it's showing, it's coming through. Yeah. Can he keep going at the end of this, yeah, round, yeah. this round? Now, this is what he needs to do. He needs to pick them punches, score the shots and get out of the way. Because James waits. So watch, he'll land a punch. If he moves, he won't get hurt. But if he stays in front of James, James is going to fire back. He's going to land some really good counter punches. He's very good at that counter. There yes, that was again. a good slip jab. Waiting. Esteban needs to put a bit more in because he took a few heavy shots at the beginning. So this a couple of quick ones. from both boxers at the moment. This Esteban is trying to work that body, mm. not working, and then taking some punishment on the backhand mm. there from James. If I was there, I'd be shouting to him to just switch down to that body with James and then bring the right hand over the top. He will score a few points that way. Unfortunately, I can't do that. So, <laughs> And plus, really good boxing from James. And now he's switching to the body as well. Again, both landing some brilliant shots here. Espan trying to work more of that hook than James at the moment. Mm. But he's doing very well with them straights again. Yeah. Landing four straight shots in a row there. This is a really good back and forth round. Unfortunately, though, Esteban needs to get back on his boxing. He's trying to fight inside with an in-fighter. James is really good at mixing it with people. He needs to get in, then out again. He needs to double up that jab. This is his last 10 That's seconds. If he wants a round, he's got to go now. Good oh, work there from Esteban. Good really there. good work. Good work, Esteban. And very good working, from James as well. Right Brilliant from belt. both of them. Unreal bout. That Unreal was, bout. for me, Bout of the night so far. Really enjoyed watching amazing, that. Amazing. We've seen some big stuff. We've seen some knockdowns. We've seen some stoppages. But Go those two, that was a very back and forth. And I think for me, best thing you want to see in the end of the was a lot of respect. James going to the corner. Espan going to the opponent's corner. It's amazing. That's Absolutely. what you want. Again, we are all part of the same team, really, fighting out of the same club. But at the end of the day, you're representing your uni tonight. Absolutely, and this is what amateur boxing is about. You're not making money while you're in there. You're in there for the sport and you're in there for the experience and the enjoyment. You go in there and for six minutes, yeah, you're enemies, but the moment that bell rings to end the match, you guys are just two people in a ring. Again, you just, give each other respect for that. There's just been so much respect tonight between all the opponents. Espan just having a word with his corner there. He steps over to the referee for the result. Again, very cool, very collected, not a care in the world. Absolutely. He's just happy to be here, he loves it. 
So, Joe, with the ladies and gentlemen, I've got a feeling this might be going to red, but it could go either way. Split decision. Split decision. In the blue oh, very well done, very, very, to very, very nice. Look at him. He loves it. Look at that. He loves it. Another massive Can result for Uni. Again, and you can tell how much proud. it means. And he's doing his mother incredibly proud as well. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family at this time. Absolutely. What a result. What Absolutely. a result. Again, for University. And that is no shame on James. An amazing result for Esteban. But James has put in a shift there. And again, I hope to see him back next year. Absolutely. And I hope he watches this back. And I hope he realises he boxed really well there. His style is very good. He just has to work on that beginning where he goes a bit too slow and he lets people rack up some points against him. Otherwise, I think quality lad, really good operator. I would love to see that bout again this time next year. Whether these guys are still at university this time next year, we might have to bring them back. They might have to pick up a master's degree to do this bout again because that was brilliant. Absolutely. And again, just to highlight, there was some really amazing work there by Esteban. Bit bouncy and you could see it slowed him down towards the end, but it was the difference in the end. That's what scored him then points up on the bout. It was close and you wouldn't have argued either way, to be honest. Very nice. Again, both opponents shaking each other's hands there. Going back to the tournament, I think they're going over for interviews. So, according to my notes, um, for the Union Sheffield with Aaron Bell next. So, he's a Middlesbrough lad. He's got it, he's got it about him. He's like for Middlesbrough. <laughs> he, he know what it's about. And he started boxing in the summer of last year. Again, like to very to new to the sport. But this is a very big stage in Sheffield. In the corner, Again, Shane hundreds Osamisa. of people watching at home. Hundreds of people in the arena tonight. It's a big stage for someone who's only been boxing for, I say, around six months. Well, what's your opinion on that? No, absolutely. Aaron's made some great progress. But just before we get to that, let's turn our focus over to Shedrak, who's going to be making his way into the ring now. Shedrak, a returning boxer from last year, got an amazing second round stoppage over Chris Barrett from the University of Sheffield. S tended to start off with a bit of a wild style. He tends to come in very wide, throwing lots of powerful punches. He's explosive and he's dangerous. What was really nice to see from him in the last year is that he's improved on his boxing. He's learned to start using that jab. Let's hope he carries that into the ring with him because he's going to have a shift in front of him tonight. And as you say about Aaron Bell, yeah, only been in the boxing this year. But I tell you what, he listens, he works really hard, he's taken to it like a fish to water. And I think he's going to put in a really good shift against Shedrak tonight. Shedrak came out very confidently there, dancing around. Look all these Hallam lads, they're just gassed to be here. And, and don't be wrong, these guys have earned their place on this competition. Absolutely. It's been brilliant so far, and I think in these last two bouts, we're going to see some unreal performances. And his opponents in the book. Absolutely, corner. the boxing's Aaron only gotten better Bell. as the evening's gone on, which is a, it's how you want a night to go. That's how you see it in professional boxing, you work your way up to the main card. Can I just say, mm -hmm. for you guys, if you can't hear us at home, an unreal walkout song from Aaron Bell. Freed from desire, he's here, he loves it. I, I, this is going to be a very good bout. Very, very, very good bout. I see and Martin down there <laughs> waving. Wants a shout out in the box, he's not getting one. Here we go. Checking his gloves, getting some water down in there, Aaron. Cook again, very, very confident and looking in impeccable shape, may I, may I just say. Both of these guys, very good shape. No, I'm very interested in this one. Like I say, Shedrak, the more explosive, more aggressive boxer. Aaron, again, new to boxing, but has taken to the techniques really well. If he can combine that with his strong physique and put it, put it in there against Shedrak, he should be able to come away with the victory. We'll have to see how it goes. Shedrak sat there, not a care in the world. Absolutely. He's used to it. He, he, he's just soaking it up. And I think when you look at these fighters again, this goes either way. This is really exciting. I, I, I'm just gassed him here. Absolutely. This, this is very, very cool. Absolutely. And Shedrak's doing what you should do. It's his moment. He's soaking it in and he's enjoying it. And he's going to let you know when he gets into that ring that same, he is here. Same with Aaron, though. Not that care will be the ladies and gentlemen. He's another contest. Shoulders back. Doesn't care. Ready to get in the mixer. This is what we want. It'll be an unreal battle. Here we go. And as you look in now, you can see from both of them. This is the moment. The pantomime's over. There's no dancing. They're in the ring with each other now. Hold that T-pose. He loves it. And his opponent in the blue corner, represent to the University of Sheffield, Aaron Bell. Also, Mason in the red, Bell in the blue, your referee, Mr. Mark Downing. Both fighters meeting in the middle of the ring there. 
doesn't seem to be much of a height difference between the two fighters there, from what I can see. No, they're both about the same size. Again, it's one of those where, in terms of skill, I'd give it to the Uni of Sheffield. In terms of power and relentlessness, I'll give it to Hallam. Shedrak's got the experience and he's improved on himself. I so that might be the telling case. tale in this bout. Aaron looking to take that middle of the ring and Shedrak meeting him in the middle there. Good combinations so, from Shedrak there. Thing to note straight away is that chin in the air by Shedrak. He doesn't want to make the same mistake that Jakob did against Ollie Scruffham and walk onto backhand. Aaron's keeping the guard nice and tight. Oh, he's walked onto a backhand there though. He's got to let Shedrak let his steam off. When he slows down, it's going to be Aaron's moment to try and win the round. But Sh for now, he's got to be calm. Shedrak throws some wild shots there. Also trying to work the body, though. Absol We've not seen that much of the body being worked tonight. Absolutely. What's really nice to see from Shedrak is he's using the jab. He didn't really use this last year. He just came in relentlessly with his hooks. But now he's trying to use the straight shots. Chin's a bit too high in the air for my liking. He wants to get that guard up. And he should be very careful there. This Shedrak dancing round in the middle of the ring. But Credit to him, to be fair, because I would not want to be on the back end of one of his hooks. Again, though, this is amateur boxing. It's about respect. He should be calming himself down a bit there and focusing on the boxing. Again, all the showboating. It's a waste of energy. Absolutely. So, now that first minute's down, you can already see Shedrak slowed down. This is Aaron's moment to start putting that double jab cross in there. As you can see, every time he puts a hand out, it lands. Shedrak needs to chuck that chin in and get the guard up. Great box there from Aaron. And he's throwing back as well. That's it. Jab. That's it. And he's blocking Shedrak's punches now, which is good. I landed a double jab, got out of the way. Shedrak's sticking his tongue out, but he's walking onto shots. And it's no good. It means that he's losing the round. All Aaron has to do is keep on this boxing for the rest of the round. He wants to throw a few more punches, collected. mind. Shedrak putting that pressure on, though. But Aaron mm. working that body. Very good guard there from Aaron. Oh, oh but take, he took another. No, he he there. needs to fire back. He needs to give Shedrak a reason he to respect throws, him. Throws He's back that jab. There, good jab again. He's landing. Sticking that tongue out again. Again, the referee should be getting involved with this. This isn't very good conduct from an amateur sportsman. Aaron taking it a bit of punishment. He needs to fire back. Seconds. He can't send the round like this. He needs to come back. Good. Backhand again. Now. Good round there from Shedrak. He's won that on his aggression, but he's walking onto a lot of shots. Aaron needs to get a bit of confidence back now. And we're seeing a, t a bit of a tail similar to last year where Shedrak starts to slow down. He was in a very good, fortunate moment where he landed his punches. Rightfully so. He's a powerful lad and he won that bout. But if Aaron's able to keep this guard up and avoid the punches for the first minute of this next round, you might see a turn in the tides. Aaron is not showing that he's only been boxing in this sport for six months. No. I would look at him and think he's got years of experience. He's taking them shots, but he's throwing them back. And but unfortunately, at the moment, Shedrak is taking control of the ring. Yeah. So for Aaron, he does need to start this second round with a lot of confidence, get in there, mm. give it him back. Mm. If I was talking to Aaron now, I'd say to him, this first 30 seconds is going to be a wild one. He needs to weather that storm and keep pumping that jab out. Once that 30 seconds is up, when Shadrach stops for a moment, that's when he needs to let his hands go. That's how he's going to win this next round. Both Shadrach and Aaron there getting ready to start the next round. And off we go. Leading with that jab, Shadrach there. Aaron throwing back that jab. So that's it. He wants to double that up, put the backhand on. That's good stuff. And keeping the guard tight, that's much better. Shedrak's a bit more controlled this round as well, which is good to see. And he's got the guard up finally. The chin's still a bit high, though. I tell him to get that stuck down. Aaron is beating him in the middle, though. Yeah, and he's landing the jab. And he's guarding, and he's landing the jab. So, so far, going into this round, I'm giving it to Aaron. It's that's a, a good lovely backhand. backhand. And and a lovely another. jab. That's a lovely combination. Can he get the count to go into the clinch? Shedrak needs to tighten up here. He needs to tuck that chin in and get his guard up. Okay, it's time for sticking tongues out is over. He needs to show that can he can box. he needs box. to keep that pressure up. Quality work here from Aaron. He needs to get a bit more in there, though. He needs to cement this round for himself. Those shots are not showing on Shedrak. He is meeting him in the middle and he is throwing back. Shedrak is not backing down from the middle of the ring. And like I say, he's a tenacious man. He's a strong fighter. He will not stop coming forward until you've put him down. And Very no one has managed to do that yet. Aaron just trying to get in that uppercut there. I don't know if it is going to land. Mm. Quality boxing from Aaron. He's got to keep that guard up, get that left hand up because Shedrak loves a long right hook. This is anyone's round at the moment. 
At the moment, I would, I would wager it's going towards Aaron. He's boxing really well, but he's got to keep that guard tight because Shedrak is looking for that single he's, punch. Aaron is not giving Shedrak anything in this round. Yeah. Lovely head Brilliant. movement, lovely block. Guard up. Shedrak getting in there, but it's a lovely bit of head movement from Aaron again. So that's closed it up a little bit. That was some good couple of punches there for Shedrak to score. I still give it to Aaron, but if he lands a few more, this might be an even closer round than we think. Aaron, lovely bit of footwork there. Just getting around his opponent, Aaron, trying to get them shots He needs in, a strong finish, does Aaron. There. He wants to double up that jab and get the backhand on the end. He needs that insurance. He needs this round. Shedrak coming in, back in that backhand. That was a good finish from Shedrak. That might have cost Aaron the round. It depends how the judges have looked at it. He boxed really well for a good one and a half minutes there. But those little ones that caught him towards the end of the round might have turned it in Shadrach's favour. I would say favor. it's probably one of the closest bouts of the night at the moment. Yeah, and as you were saying before, the bouts just seem to be getting better, which is good to see. Again, so, for you guys watching at home, this is not the last fight of the night. Next up, it's a big fight. It's a big fight, but we'll get to that when we get there. At the moment, Aaron and Shedrak. Absolutely. Both corners, swiping them down a little bit, probably from Callum. So, what do you think Callum's saying to Aaron down there? So, he's probably telling him to keep that guard tight. He's probably explaining, Shedrak, in terms of boxing skill, Aaron's got him beat there, and he's winning with boxing, but he needs to put more in. This round is the decider, and he's got to box his heart out. He's not got to switch off for the full two minutes. Shedrak, I believe he's been told to calm down too because his boxing improved last round, but he still wasn't able to get it past Aaron. His big shots were what maybe got him that round. Now he's going back in again, meeting Shedrak in the middle. Shedrak good use of the jab, good use of the jab, Gross. Getting on his chin though. Working in and out by Aaron. This is really good boxing. Good That's jab a again. Lovely jab. And he just wants to keep it this way because Shedrak is slowing down with every punch. He tends to put too much power into every shot. When it lands, it's beautiful, but when it misses, it tires him out. Again, good boxing from Aaron. Good use of the head movement, keeping the guard up. He wants to try and tie Shedrak up. Now take that boxing away from him. What less dancing from Shedrak this round. Aaron leading back with that back Got to get that guard up. Hits back. Nice, good use of the left hook there from Aaron. He's keeping it nice and tight. He's working on the inside a bit better this round. There's a lot of head movement there from Aaron. I'd be yelling at him now to land a few punches and then just try and tie Shedrak up. He's got to try and take this boxing away from Shedrak because when he gets these punches going, he's landing. Shedrak landing very good one-twos there. Again, good shots there from Aaron. But, uh, Aaron just and good shots back. from Shedrak too. This is a really good barnstorm here. The fundamentals being shown in this fight are incredible. Brilliant fundamentals from Aaron. Really good tenacity and power from Shedrak. Both of them going back and forth here. Boxing-wise, I'm giving it to Aaron, but Shedrak is still landing really good, clean punches. It's so back and forth here, I'm not quite sure how it's going. Back into the last minute of this round now. Aaron Brilliant, again. And they're getting oh, two backhands. The first Shedrak time. Firing back. He pushes Shedrak back for the first time too, which was good to see. And again, he lands punches. So, Shedrak needs to get that guard up. He's gotten a bit too carried away. Okay. Oh, it was Aaron's mouth guard that came out. That's interesting. This is a good breathing moment, but the thing is, Shedrak's going to know that he needs to win the last part of this match. He's going to come out, he's going to come swinging. Aaron needs to stay disciplined. This rest now for both fighters. Pivotal. A lot of energy coming back now. Pivotal. You're about to see. It's Some about shots to go. being thrown here now. Shedrak getting back into the middle. Aaron responding. Aaron needs to get back in there. He can't let Shedrak win back the momentum. Keeping Good that shots again. Keep now. That's a lovely hook. Once again, Shedrak firing them hooks out. Good he shots again. He needs this knockdown. Aaron is not He needs to anywhere. keep his guard up. He keeps walking onto them shots. Now he needs to win it. If Aaron wants it, he's got right to let the hands go now. A lot of shots there. Aaron needs to keep his hand oh. up. And that's a count. It's a real and shame that. Round. Again, brilliant show from both boxers. Aaron definitely got the respect from Shedrak towards the end. There was a lot less showboating. So again, I, I don't know. I don't know which one to give. Yeah, really important thing to remember as well. Standing eight counts don't influence who wins a round in amateur boxing. It's not like in the pros. If you knock them down, it's a 10-8 round. Right now, we've just seen some really good boxing from Aaron, but you saw some good shots land from Shedrak. It's going to be a question of which way the judges have seen it. Is it Aaron's boxing or is it Shedrak's big shots? We're going to find out in just a moment. I think it might be another split decision. It, for me, definitely a split decision. I just don't know which way it goes. <laughs> Shedrak definitely taking that first round, but I think it's that round two. Again, for, for you, who took the round two? Round two, 
all of the rounds were really close. I thought Shedrak was a lot more clear a winner in the first round. I thought Aaron Box brilliantly in the second round. Just still got caught by a couple, but I'd give it to him. This last round, can't tell you. I'd, I'd say if I was going to be biased, I'd say the standing eight count gives it to Shedrak. With a unanimous points decision. Unanimous. In the red corner. Again, well deserved. Gone. Is that a Rashford celebration? You've got to respect it. Fair enough. Absolutely. Really good work in there from both, both boxes. Again, unreal boxes, but Shedrak coming out on top there. Yeah. A lot of respect from the corners being shown. Shedrak, unreal boxer. Got a lot to be proud of there. No, absolutely. Really good stuff. You've got to be a bit careful with the kidology. If you get someone in front of you that's willing to snap a punch out while you're doing it, you can end up losing your tongue. But can't knock his tenacity. He comes forward, he throws the big shots, he believes in himself until the very end of the bout. In terms of varsity, Hallam are going down swinging. They are not giving you these bouts. Absolutely. And like we said before, it doesn't matter about the score for that's boxers. What you, that's it, what you want to see. A lot of love from the Hallam men there. Again, there's no, there's no love lost. There's no love lost. Aaron, again, going over to his uni of guys there. Uh, check himself with the doctor. Brilliant fighter. I want to see him back next year. Absolutely, definitely. Um, the amount of progress he's managed to make in just a mere, what, eight months? I, I'd love to see what he can do with there's a bit. There's not many fighters yeah. at a university level that would step into this ring the way he has done tonight and put on the show that he has, the experience that he has. He's a credit to the club. He's a credit to the university, and not only that, he's a credit to himself. And that's uh, what we love to see. Absolutely, and it can see some really good celebrations going on there on the Hallam crowd. Again, Shedrak done himself proud, improved a lot on his boxing from the previous year. Still needs to work a bit on keeping that chin tucked in, not up in the air, because he walked onto a few, but can't fault his tenacity. That won him the bout. He is a strong boxer, and I hope he improves further next year. We're here. Last fight of the night. So, I'm going to hand you over to introduce Adam Green. Adam Green. For Hallam, she Hallam Sheffield. Sheffield Hallam University. Off you go, Will. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll give it just a moment for this crowd to die down because oh, yeah. they Wait. still seem to be uh, covering the place. I haven't seen any pints get thrown, which is always a bonus. Got to say, the crowd, a lot better behaved than last year. Absolutely. We had parents kicking off. We had, we had students kicking off. No, varsity in general just seems to be something that gets better <laughs> gets every eaten. year. It just gets eaten. <laughs> but yeah, let's have a little look out here. Oh boy, I hope Ladies Shedrak can breathe. Ladies and gentlemen, before our final bout of here the evening. Here we go, like this is what we're here for, the final fight of the night. The officials who've attended our supervisor in charge, Mr. Philip Wood, our medical officer, Mr. Morris Mann. To all the boxers who've competed today, to the two universities for making it such a good show. To yeah, all yourselves, crowd, to thank you very see. much. And also to Brendan Warburton and the Sheffield City boxing team. Thank Massive you. Massive shout out to Sheffield City. Again, this event isn't possible Our without final them. bout of the day. I would like to invite to the ringside in the red corner, Adam Green. There he is. And Adam here we Green. go. Well, over to you, sir. So, Adam Green, we've got a very tall, experienced combat athlete here in Adam Green. First time stepping in the ring for an amateur boxing bout. Brilliant choice of song, by Brilliant the way. Brilliant mullet. It's uh, got to be said. Uh, <laughs> what a trim. That's yeah. a real mullet. And if style won you the bout, but it, you know. Well, <laughs> I, I have to say, and you guys will see it over in the moment, he has a better haircut than Jack Whiteman. That's, that's all we're going to say. But going back to uh, Adam Green. So, experienced combat athlete. He's got a few years of Taekwondo behind him, so he knows what it's like to get into a contest with someone and have to throw, com uh, throw strikes at one another. He's here for it. It's what he wants. Absolutely. He's got the height advantage on Jack. And if he can adapt his uh, skills to boxing and use it in there, Jack he's going to be Whiteman. doing very well. And here he is, Jack Whiteman. So, a little bit of detail on Jack Whiteman. And I've got a quote from him as well. Take a look at him. This man has a 22-pound haircut. Looks a bit like Kratos. And a bit of a quote from him. His Turkish barber made him look bald, bald for tomorrow. Genuinely a slaphead. That is what he has said to me in the group chat. So, again, potential captain for next year. He's a local lad, massive Wednesday fan. And he's channeling his anger towards the Chancery family tonight because they're horrible owners. <laughs> well, where, where are you at with it? I'm, I'm, I'm just gassed to see him in the ring. Look well, at him. Oh, look at him. He's, 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 oh. Well, working with Jack Whiteman this last couple of years, Really proud of the way that he's uh, developed as a boxer. He's, he's, unreal, he's an unreal boxer. But look at Adam, again, shadow boxing in the ring. He's not there to be played around with. He wants this win. It again, it's over for Hallam as a whole tonight. 
But Adam, he's not going down without a fight. For Adam, and it's Jack about to start. This point. Again, this is but this is Jack's first bout. I don't know about Adam. Adam, first amateur boxing bout. First amateur boxing bout. A few again. years' experience in Taekwondo, but at the same time, it's a different sport. It's about how he adapts to these new ways. He's got the reach advantage on Jack. He's going to have to use that if he wants to beat him. Jack has good fundamentals. Final bout of the we'll let them get introduced first. Consisting of three two-minute rounds. Introducing in the red corner, representing the Sheffield Hallam Uni, Adam Gray. Both in good spirits. Hallam University crowd still here after the loss again. And it's not his all opponent about the to the blue corner, representing the, the University of Sheffield, Jack Whiteman. And here he is, Jack Whiteman. Jack A lot of energy from the Uni Whiteman crowd the here. Blue. Jack looking very Mr. confident. Adam Downing. strutting into the middle of the ring, touching gloves. We're, we're in for something here. Absolutely. It's like I say, it's going to be a classic tale of rangy boxer versus short and powerful. I want to say that Adam has a little bit of height on Jack. Mm -hmm. Can you confirm that, or is that my eyes being funny? Might be his hair, but I'm pretty Might sure. Be his <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he's got a height and reach advantage on Jack. But here we go. Let's see Jack how these 22 pound haircut, and he's off in the middle of the ring. That's what we want. So Boring body shots, keeping that jab. That's a lovely uppercut. Just misses though. Good aggression from both boxers. What I'd, want, what I'd want from Adam, though, I'd want him to keep that range. At the end of the day, he shouldn't have to be throwing those wild shots until he has to. That's brilliant footwork there from Adam. Jack just taking control of the ring and taking a few shots as punishment. Jack's keeping but composed. responding very well with that backhand. Yeah. And he's keeping that guard up too. Dropping it a bit when he throws the combos, but that's very common of first bouts, and that's a really important thing to remember here. Both of these guys, first time stepping in a boxing ring, and what a performance in just the first 30 seconds. So, looks like the, the mirror ring, but Jack working that body again. And I think for me, what I've seen him spar, that's what he works very well. He's very good at taking control of the middle of the ring. He's very good at working that body. At the moment, Adam Green landing some really good straight shots. Seems to be taking the initiative a bit more, which you don't tend to see from good rangy fighters. And that beautiful uppercut then, a really good mix-up. What Jack needs to do is he needs to start trying to get Adam to the ropes. Adam Green... His footwork is showing like expert of kickboxing experience. Jack, see, he's there, he's ready. Middle of the ring, and off we go again. Before Jack can Look start landing properly. Jack, and again. That's it, he wants and to get into that corner, and this is his moment. Chasing him around the ring, he wants it. He wants that count. Adam coming back in again, but Jack doesn't seem that bothered. Good Keeping boxing. Keeping that boxing, a lot of head work there. Nah. Keeping that feint up. Now, what you saw a moment ago was a tale of the night. Every time someone's managed to get someone to the ropes, a boxer has been able to escape by circling off to the side. Jack needs to cut off that ring because he has got a reach disadvantage here. When he lands the punches like that, he's doing really well. He wants Look to keep that. Adam here so Adam he can land. Adam taking a lot of punishment there. Adam wants to get that guard up. He wants to keep his guard up. Final 10 seconds of the round. He doesn't want to get Lovely mixed in. Bit of head work there from Whiteman. Taking control in the middle of the ring. Adam throwing back, not landing. And that's the round. Brilliant. Yep, brilliant first round. I give it to Hallam just off of Adam Green's work there. Kept it nice and long, landed some really unique punches with that right uppercut and a few hooks. Jack works really well once he managed to pin him down. But again, he's got to keep him pinned to them ropes. Ollie Webster speaking to Jack in the corner now. Just telling him, keep calm, keep collected. Mm -hmm. You're doing very well. Absolutely. Really good boxing from both guys at the moment. And this is a, so far a really good bout <laughs> really to good end up. We're, lo we're losing our heads in the boxing. Oh, here. mate. The euphoria of it all, the adrenaline, it's amazing. I have been waiting all night for this bout. Jack, the training he's been going through for this, unreal. I bet Adam as well, Absolutely. brilliant. And well, again, unreal haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Look how confident he is. That is a man that is confident with a mullet. That, that's what we want. Jack still sat down there. And that is Kratos. That is, he is the <laughs> god of war. <laughs> well, let's see if we can turn it around. We want this to be a split one going into the final Taking round. 22 pound haircut into the middle of the ring to beat Adam. Jack needs to get him pinned to the ropes so he can start pinning. Notice how oh, he stepped to the left and gave there, Adam an escape route. There, body. he wants to keep him on the ropes. He needs to land Walking his punches. Edward, Adam take a bit of punishment there. Some good shots there from Jack so far. He needs to step to the right. He needs to cut off that escape route. Now you see Brilliant. Adam. It's a brilliant fate there from Jack. He's just keeping that left hand out and he's waiting to throw that hook. At the moment, he's landed the better shots, but this escape route here, watch. Adam's going to circle to the left. He's going to end up back in the centre of the ring in the moment. Adam is throwing some lovely shots here, but Jack's head work, it's, it's impeccable. It's, it's, it, 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 it's impeccable, it's incredible. I'm running out of adjectives. It's <laughs> that good. 
So you're enjoying the bout is what it's we're trying to say to those at home. Bout. It's a brilliant bout. So Adam made Adam a big mistake Adam's there. Good head movement, work. but he's got to get that guard up because Jack nearly landed a big one. Where Jack has him on the head movement, Jack is destroying him. Oh, Good. no, sorry. Adam is destroying him on the footwork. The tide seems to be starting to turn a bit now. Jack's starting to find the punches. But look again. Oh, a big shot landed there. there. Standing getting, count. Jack's going to take the count. OK. Adam gassing up the crowd there. Again, unfazed. So he's got to be careful here because Adam is hes pumping with adrenaline. He's probably going to try and get a few big shots in now. But no, you know what? Very calm and composed. And that's probably the combat experience from Taekwondo that's keeping him nice and composed. Both fighters. Just yeah. think the overall composure of this bout has been brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Good work from Jack. Oh, he walks onto Taking another big, big one. shot there, but he's phoning him back. Oh, he's, he's coming back. back. And there's a clinch there. We're going to wait for him to be separated. He wants to land to and that. they're off again. He wants to get him stuck on them ropes, Jack, so he can start landing his punches. Jack, Jack, he's not taking the punishment. Oh, he's landed a couple there. Jack needs to tuck that chin in. He's getting caught by a few once he's in there. He needs to step That's on now, does Jack? Out. He wants to secure this round. That's Working better. Working that body. Throwing for the head as well. Again, Adam's footwork coming back in. It's brilliant. End Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Wow, 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 wow. So, what a fight we have here. So... Very close round, that one. I want to give it to Jack because he landed a lot of punches in the beginning. Did take a standing eight count, but he still came forward tenaciously and started landing better punches. Adam started to drop his guard and move his head a bit too much, and that's when Jack started to land. This last round might be pivotal. What we need to see now is a bit more disciplined work from Adam, keeping it long, and Jack needs to cut that ring off. Every single time he pins him on the ropes, Jack steps to one side where there's a big gap and he comes back to the centre. He can't let that happen again if he wants to win this bout. I think what you've just said to me, Ollie Webster will definitely be relaying this to him now. Absolutely. Jack is going into this round, has to be ready for war, but the same with Adam. Adam is not going to let this slide. He wants this win. Howard needs this win. And I think for him personally, he, he's not going to go down without a fight. Absolutely. And the same with Jack. This last round now of tonight, this could go either way. Two giants of the varsity boxing. We're the yet final to see round. The knockout. Let's could go. Could we see one? So step into the right is what Jack needs here. Notice how Adam's circling to the left. There we go. Good work. Pass. Great head work from Adam. Just needs to work in there. He's got him in the clinch. Adam wants to keep it long. He wants to draw Jack on a bit. Use them feints again. Wolfly better head work there from Jack. Again, he keeps stepping to the left. He winds up back in the centre. So far, I think Jack's landed just a few more punches. Yep, and he's landing some good ones there. Adam needs to get the range back on him. Adam just getting out there a little bit to jump back in with that backhand and just misses. What I'd like to see from Adam is, from that first round, that use of the rear hand uppercut as Jack's coming in. I reckon that'll stop him dead in his tracks, but you never know. He needs to throw a few more punches here because at the moment, Jack's taking the lead. Both fighters not showing any signs of slowing down in this last round. They no. want this win. No, this is absolute quality back and forth all the way through. Got Ollie Webster getting on his feet, shouting in. You've got the Hallam side, yeah, Richard Naylor. Two very experienced boxers themselves calling in for both of their boxers. They can't be standing still. This is a very close round and it's very close bout. It's all down to who's going to put in more right now. Oh, landing that hook there. Adam needs to tuck the work. chin in. Adam oh, he's turned away. He's, he's back to Jack. The referee should have stopped it there, but no. Let's keep this, keep, let's keep this going. Both corners. Got to be a little bit mental there. The ref should have stopped it there for a count. Going into that clinch. Ref back up again. So now when a boxer turns her back to the opponent, they need to reset the bout. But again, anyway. Nothing against this ref. This ref has been brilliant all night long. Just, just has missed that. Absolutely no. Brilliant refing all night. Some really good oh, That's a lovely stoppages. combination there from Jack. Oh, He's last 10, 10 seconds. seconds. Let's Here see who's go. got it. In that clinch again, Jack needs to throw. Back again. Time. Unreal, again, and respect between both opponents. Absolutely, really good bout. So, story of, the, of that bout there, I'd say. Jack Green, brilliant start. Second round, Whiteman comes out, boxes really well. Did take a standing eight count, but he started to show some tenacity. I think it was a close round and it might have gone his way. Looking at that last round, again, going to Whiteman. So, I think we're looking close here. If it's a split decision, can go either way. Quick prediction, who do you think? 
I, I have to give it Whiteman. I, I have to give it Whiteman. I think it could have gone to Green, but again, two very close rounds to close off the bout. And, and then, I've got to say, Chef City again picking a perfect bout to end off the night. It's brilliant. The crowd were on their feet. And again, big futures in the sport if these guys pursue it. I, 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 don't, know who to, I don't know who to give it to. Me neither. I do not know Me who neither. to give it to. Me neither. And now we're at that point in the night where I should probably say it. I am a uni of student. I am trying to be very impartial. However, I do want to give it Jack Whiteman. <laughs> no, really good boxing from both of them. Again, I think there was some really good work from Jack Green. I think he just tapered off towards the and end of the Joe bout, which all that bouncing on the sample. Let's go to the decision. With a split decision, with a split decision. Oh. in the red corner. Well deserved, Adam. Again, brilliant, brilliant mullet as well. But <laughs> again, a real fighter. It, it, I think for me, what won him that fight was the footwork. Look at him going mental with yeah. his hollow. He loved, he, again, the fighters love it, and, and that's why we're here. It's been a real night. Yeah, and like you say, you couldn't have called it either way. So, you know, both boxers, amazing work. We're happy that, you know, we got a decision. Didn't go to, didn't go to Uniov's way, but he can be proud of that performance. It the God of War will return. It should be noted, though, Uniov Sheffield have won the night. They've taken that varsity point, and that's going to be great. Right, for ladies the and gentlemen. Competition in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm, Our winning team tonight. Is the University of Sheffield. There it is. There it is. Two like, years running. I In case like the cameras aren't picking it up, the University of Sheffield is going mental the right the ring, now. Please, can we have our winning team in the ring? And then we'll get the winning team in the ring here. Black and gold playing. DJs know what they're doing. They love it. You can see him nodding his head over there. He knows. <laughs> he knows the score. <laughs> get him in the ring. Get him in the ring. Uh, do I still need to be impartial? Can I, can I get a thumbs up over there? I, I, impartiality? No? Ah, I still need to be impartial. End of the day, it's a good, good song choice. It's a good song choice. I wonder what Hallam's would have been. <laughs> Guess we'll never know. <laughs> anyway. On to next year, I suppose. On to next year. On to next year. Tell you what, what a back and forth night. Clear victory for the Uni of Sheffield, but the bouts, every single one could have gone either way. Look at them all, medals on, love it. These men are going to Tiger Works tonight. This is this is what we want. What's that? We're getting them all in. Yeah. Gags is going in, club captain Zap there, again, has worked incredibly hard this year to make sure this competition has one, gone ahead and two little bouts are fair. And I think for me tonight, there's not been a single bout that was unfair. Every fight could have gone either way. No, and there's been a really strong commu uh, committee for the University of Sheffield this year. Their first social sec was a bit near, but the rest of them, absolutely amazing. And you I, mean, could I, I think you mean social media sec, and I, I heard it was a sound guy. But, but anyway, but anyway, this, this is it about him tonight. This is it about the club. Look at them, amazing. Always good for hands in the air there. Well deserved. OK, so just one more time. An amazing night for both universities. Some quality boxing from both teams. Everyone that stepped in tonight should be proud of themselves. Just going to say my goodbyes. I've been Will Simpson with you, and this is Charlie Barry. Yeah, I've been Charlie Barry. Again, an amazing night. I hope you guys have enjoyed well, it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one and now more trophy to, to present. Oh. We have in, uh, one in more trophy to second, present. Because they're going mental in the ring. Absolutely, and you can see how happy they are in the ring. They're doing the brilliant. Evening is Holly very Stewart! Hey. Boxing evening. Again, very well deserved. She's trained incredibly hard for this. And again, the boxing she used in that bout. Every time that she was about right, to pin to the ropes, she was brilliant footwork and maintained the distance using them straight shots. Brilliant we'll outfit. Next year. Absolutely. Thank you and good night. Zach there, club captain. Okay, and... Uh, so we are now going to hand off. I have been Charlie Barry. We've had a brilliant night. Will... And I've been Will Simpson, and uh, yep, we're handing you off. Have a good night. And that is the end of Sheffield Varsity Boxing 2024. What an absolutely incredible evening. Brilliant home. win for Uni of, second time in a row. Any thoughts, guys? Uh, it was a fantastic night of bouts. From the second half, we had a great start with Holly getting the win against Sophie, who actually just won Fighter of the Night as well, which was fantastic. 
and a great last bout between Jack and Adam. Well fought, everyone did really well, and I think, I speak for all of us, and I think they should be proud of themselves for the fight that they put up today in each bout. Um, it was a fantastic evening, the fans enjoyed themselves, you can't ask for much more, but black and gold will be ringing out as uh, Varsity comes to a close. Yeah, I mean, uni of should be so proud of themselves. All the boxers should be really proud of themselves. It's so intimidating to go out there, get in the ring with lots of chanting people. Also amazing that one of the female bouts, that was fight of the night. So it's just been a great night, and I think everyone should be really proud of themselves. Absolutely incredible evening, incredible fighting. Um, and that is all from us at Forge TV. We really hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next.